So I got Austin and Jesse of Bedroom Floor in here today. Do you guys want to quickly just shout out the members of the other, like the other members of the band that aren't here? Oh yeah, uh, Caleb, Logan, and Lauren cannot be here, but uh, they are here in spirit. So. They're with us in our hearts. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Rest and in peace, all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> they're not dead, but you know, oh. they're not here, so how are you supposed to know? Yeah, exactly. And uh, just quickly, like, promote the social media pages and where people can listen to Bedroom Floor, as well as your other bands that you're right. in. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, even though we don't use Twitter anymore, Facebook, um, our ad is at Bedroom Floor MD. Yeah, um, it's pretty much that on everything. It's oh, like pretty yeah. universal. Yeah. Oh, uh, and TikTok as well. Oh. That's true. We are we are on TikTok <laughs> trying to get that true, true, true. That TikTok blow up clout. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are on Spotify, Apple Music, and Bandcamp. Yeah. Pretty much every streaming service you like listen to music, you can find us. Uh, we got some stuff on YouTube as well. Um, Pandora. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never I've actually never tried to listen to us on Pandora, but I've never even used Pandora. I used to like years ago. It's been ago. like so long, dude. Like yeah. elementary school, man. Right, I feel yeah. like only teachers use Pandora, like for <laughs> classrooms and shit. Yeah. Oh my god. I was at this gig with my uncle. We were just playing like a bunch of covers for like this event at a church. And not even our church. I don't even go to church, but they were just like talking about Pandora and like using it for in between the bands and the sets. And I was just like, wow, that's the name I haven't heard in forever. Right. Yeah, it's like iHeartRadio. Does anybody use that <laughs> yeah. shit? Oh, man. I forgot that existed. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. iHeartRadio right. Festival Bedroom Floor headlining. <laughs> only. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The first thing I wanted to get into was y'all's musical backgrounds. What age did you like first pick up your instruments? Do I want to go first? Um, So basically, my dad really wanted me to, like, be a drummer throughout my whole entire life. Like, he just kind of threw, like, one of the, you know, those little, little toy drum kits? Yeah. Yeah, he basically threw that there, and I loved it for a time. But getting into, like, school band really killed all my motivation because Mm. throughout most of middle school and high school, I just had really terrible band teachers. Mm. So it killed my motivation, and it wasn't until after quitting high school band when I was like 15 or 16 where I actually was getting the motivation to pick up drums again. So I was a bit of a late bloomer, honestly. Okay. Yeah, kind of same. Uh, I uh, Before I even like played like hard music or anything, I was just in like school band and stuff. I played trumpet for like six years. But again, it was like a deal. I got further into high school, and all my motivation to play that kind of music was kind of just like, I was like, I don't want to do this. So, yeah. uh, so my senior year, I started teaching myself, uh, how to play like bass and guitar and drums and all that. Um, and then started this band, just like writing music in my bedroom. Um, Gotcha. So, and since, uh, you're the vocalist, right? Um, when did you start like practicing that? Uh, so that actually, that was actually something I started as a freshman in high school. That was like the first like thing that I, I really wanted to do with like bands like this. Like I, uh, I went to like an August Burns Red show and was like, wow, I want to do that. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I started like teaching myself in my basement when my parents weren't home, just what, like teaching myself how to scream. What was that process like? Cause I know it can be definitely oh, hard man. as shit. It's so hard because it's, it's one of those things that like, it, it's hard to put into words how to like do it or like how to teach someone else how to do it. You literally just have to feel it out and just try stuff until you figure out something that works. And like, I would, I'd shred my throat all the time. Like, yeah. I definitely wasn't using the right technique, but it's something I eventually, like, got down, so. Yeah. That's good, but. and um, you already answered the question about playing band at school, because, like, <laughs> I, I, I knew of you, you know, just from Winter's Mill. It's like you said before we started, you know, everybody kind of knew of each other, yeah. and I was like, I remember him being in band, I think, so. That was only in my freshman year, though. Oh, okay. And I just... Oh, I just couldn't stand Godly, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was in marching band for like three years of high school. Yeah, that I bet was that was. Fun. I bet that was more fun than Winter's Mill marching yeah. band because marching band and Winter's Mill suck. The Westminster one was pretty fire. We got to do some cool stuff and go to some cool places, but it yeah. was just like not not my vibe. It, it's such a school. different universe. I yeah. feel like than any other sort of music <laughs> creation. It's yeah. like you're playing all this like I'm. I'm assuming it's all like old as fuck. God, yeah, and like. With marching band shows and stuff too, like they usually have like themes behind them, so it could be something more like contemporary. But you have to memorize like, like 
I forget how long a marching band show is, but it's at least like 10 to 20 minutes of music. You have to just internalize and memorize. Oh, yeah. Damn. It's, it's crazy. Dude. 10 minutes straight. That it's that shit's kind of cool, though. Like, watching all those, like, high-end college marching bands do it. Like, yeah. the Blue Devils. That's yeah. one of my yeah. favorite things to do is just sick, watch those man. drum yeah. cams. And did you ever, like... Uh, like have to do any like actual like parades or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, actually, I've done I've done quite a few parades and stuff. Um, just like everyone like walking like in time at the same time. It's like it's like like almost some like military shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, like, my brother was in uh, JROTC and he uh, did like the color guard or whatever yeah. it is that you march. And like I just remember him having to wear like the full giddy up and it was hot <laughs> yeah. as shit outside, Yo. sweating like a motherfucker, dude. I don't know if you remember, but my sister was in color guard too. Um, Danielle Wolf. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that shit is a whole other world. And you were right about it being like more military, like because like. Like I said, if you look at those college bands, like those really high end marching bands, they have like, like dead on military discipline. Yeah. No, the discipline's insane. Like they really push that. You're talking about like the ones that like the football games and shit, yeah. where it's like they make letters yep. and shit like yep. that. Yeah, yeah that yep. stuff is nuts, it's dude. Cool. It's it's like you gotta play music, you gotta like march correctly, and you gotta like have like choreography and shit. It, yeah. It's it's really like people clown it, but like it's it's. Super impressive when oh, it's done abs- right. Absolutely. I hate it when people clown marching yeah. bands. It's always the football meatheads that are like, oh, it's not that hard. And it's like, okay, man. Try it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> nah, man, I feel that. Because like, I, I don't like it when anybody really talks shit about people that are doing anything better than them. Because <laughs> like, I know people who will like judge others' music and be like, eh, it, it's okay. And it's like, well, dude, you haven't released any music. How are you able to talk shit? Right. You haven't yeah. done anything. Like, even if, even if they've practiced, it's like, yo, you still haven't recorded anything and released anything. So... You can't be over here saying, like, oh, they're okay. It's like, no, yeah. you're okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> These people are playing shows, shit like that. Yeah. That's why I get people like y'all on because it's like, y'all are doing your thing, yo. People need to recognize that. Yeah, people that. people worry too much about what other people are doing for real. It's like, it's like you're not going to ever get anywhere as a band if you're so focused on other people that you're not, like, honing in on your own stuff. It's right. Just, that like, was a that was a problem I had for a while. Was like focusing too much on what other people were doing. Like when hard, I was starting dude. to come up in the scene, because it's just like it was more just like being and like not uh, not really envious, but it's just like wishing I could be uh, be like that. But I gotta worry on building that up myself rather than focusing on what trends people are doing. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's like normal to like have a healthy observation about what other bands are doing and stuff but like what's most important is that you're like if you want something you got to go out there and do it yourself like i'm a big believer in that oh yeah (laughs) dude especially lately i've been getting into all sorts of like podcasts and things like that and like that's that's an important message man like people have to realize like and we'll get into it later with one of the lyrics that you wrote it's like you really are in charge of the direction that your life goes in and it's like people people often complain about shit that they have every right to change like People think that they're stuck in their positions, but yeah. really it's like, yo, pull yourself out. It's like, I work at a random house, okay. and it's basically a dusty-ass warehouse full of books and <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah. It's kind of funny because, like, they've had people going around cleaning the place, but that's only because they're having people come in for tours and stuff like that. It's like, I want to go up to them and be like, yo, if y'all would have been here, like, a week before, you'd be, like, <laughs> walking through cobwebs and shit. But, um... Oh, Yeah. Nah, man, I, like, literally, people will write in the shelves, like, fuck Random House, fuck this job, and I just want to go up to them and be like, yo, you know you can leave, right? Yeah. Like, they, they don't yeah. have a gun to your head, yeah. dude. It's not like Amazon, where you're like... <laughs> Jeff Bezos might actually have a gun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's fucking Random House. It's a book publishing <clears throat> company. As influential as that, and as powerful in that industry as they are, it's not like they control your whole entire life. <laughs> nah, man, people gotta realize, like, you gotta really pick and choose what uh, what you're stuck in, if that makes sense. Yeah. Not to sound like like an asshole or anything, but some people basically have the same mindset for a job at like uh, like a job a job at a small warehouse comparable to a job at fucking Amazon or something. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. doubt. Um. 
I'm trying to remember where I was going to go with that. Uh, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> because there are definitely some people that just cannot find a better job anywhere else. But there are also people that, like, just complain pretty much yeah, yeah dude I, that's basically half the people there all they do is complain man and it's like it's uh, yeah i remember what i was gonna say it's all a mentality basically yeah. like yep. just change your mentality and for me it's like i know this place i'm at now this shit is temporary because mm. oh. like no offense to the people like that work there but it's like i look at people that are older than my parents working there and i'm like there's no fucking way i can be there yeah. at that age i would I... like <laughs> I'm not gonna say it, but it's like I'd fucking rather kill myself, dude. Like, there's no fucking way. It's really yeah. that like boomer capitalistic mindset that keeps people trapped in those types of jobs. And it's like if you'd like those kinds of jobs, more power to you. I would right. never yeah, do that. Yeah, they're necessary, but it's like they are absolutely necessary. And that's the thing. Like you are free to leave uh, leave those jobs, but those jobs are definitely necessary. Yeah. Right. No one wants to work a job. It's just like you gotta find you gotta find one that's like the 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 best of the worst of just like having yeah, a job it's just something that you're like okay like i don't like this job no one likes having a job but i need this to make money so like i'm not gonna fucking complain yeah about you gotta it. be a little realistic about right, life yeah. and it's like i i think everybody should actually follow their passion but it's like you gotta get a nine to five to fuel right. that passion that's right. something i talked about in my last interview he was talking about how there's nothing wrong with getting a nine to five to fuel your passion and Absolutely it's like not. you have to have legal revenue to be able to fund that sort of right, stuff exactly yes. <clears throat> or you could just sell math <laughs> <laughs> you could yes you could <laughs> All right, um, we are from Westminster after all. <laughs> yeah, all that hair on. Oh yeah. Anyways, <laughs> anyways. Austin, and um, on your Facebook it says you studied at the Sheffield Institution for the Recording Arts. Yes, I did. However, I haven't used that certification very mu very well or very much at all, because like, at the time I used to be in another local band and we were just touring and not touring, we were just playing gigs constantly like every week and it was really interfering with my school life like um my teacher drew Mazarek, he would see me like fall asleep in class so often and everybody everybody kind of just left me alone right because it's like they knew i was gigging constantly and not getting enough sleep at all but I kind of wish that they would just kind of push me and woke me up because... That's, like, the good and bad thing about after high school is, like, they really don't care. Them teachers don't care. They're like, yo, you're paying for this, so if you want to if you want to show up, that's on yeah, you, dude. It's on you, yep. So it's, like, that's cool because they're not up your ass, but it's, like you said, sometimes when you need that little kick of motivation... It's not there. Yeah. That's why, uh, that's why I really respect, like... Um, my boss at my current job at the Fillmore in Silver Spring. Shout out Matt Weiss because he actually pushes me and actually like wants to see me get better. I see him as like the Gordon Ramsay of stage hands because <laughs> it's like he gives you shit. <laughs> he gives you shit, but he's doing it out of like wanting to see you get yeah, better. It's constructive. It's yeah, not just exactly. being an asshole. Especially with how high octane that job is. He's just like, get on this shit now. Yeah. Um, and it also said, because I was going to ask about that in a little bit, it also says you work at uh, the Ram's Head, right? Yes, I do. So, like, Ram's Head, Fillmore and Silver Spring, just stagehand jobs. Okay. It's mostly out of just, like, love for the industry, like, really wanting to get involved um, with sound production. Because, I, like I said, I went to Sheffield which for audio production, so I wanted to... So Get is that what that you, uh, like, I guess, majored in was, like, audio engineering? Kind of. There's no really majors there. It's just, right. like, you take a class. It's like a trade school. That's why I had it in, like, quotations yeah. as a major. Because <laughs> it says you can study, like, audio engineering, video production, AV electronics, and TV and radio broadcasting. So, like, which category do you, would you say you uh, fit oh, in the audio most? production. Gotcha. Yeah, because I always thought that was cool as hell, and I, I also, like kind of want to set up my home studio uh, like a home studio start recording myself and recording drums more but i got no time to stay at home and i'm trying to work <laughs> i'm trying to work on my schedule so hopefully soon i can get on that yeah dude funny enough right i was explaining how i listened to like i guess motivational podcasts or whatever or just podcasts with advice and one of the things they talked about was like you need to have like your life in a schedule yeah and it uh 
if you actually lay out a schedule, it, it, it it's hard to follow. I laid one out. I haven't been following it that well. Yeah. I followed it for like a day. But like you just got to get in the habit of sticking to the schedule. And Because mm-hmm. for me, man, it's like I come home and I know that all day I think, man, I'm going to go home. I'm going to get all my notes yeah. done. I'm going to upload i'm gonna do research and then i get home and it's like yeah yeah you're like i don't really feel like it (laughs) but you know once i started to like think all right let me actually plan out my day i have set times now where i research and do things like that so that's all you gotta do like mess around with the free time you got figure out what you can do you're probably not gonna stick to it that great at first yeah but it'll become habit eventually exactly planning and organization is so important if you want to get anything done because if you don't have like a solid game plan you just, you have all this, like, things will keep piling up on you and then it'll get overwhelming and you don't feel like doing any of it. So oh, it's yeah. like, And it's like you said, habits are very important yeah. too. That's like anybody that um, doesn't like what they, what they are, or who they are, what they're doing, it's basically all because of your habits. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't think of the exact saying, but basically it's like your conditions of your life are contingent on your habits. Uh-huh. So if, like, if you want to change your life, change your habits. Right. Um, so... You said that you're basically a stagehand. You just move equipment around and stuff like that. Move equipment around, set up the equipment. Sometimes I shadow. Okay. Well, well, not really shadow. I want to shadow like lighting and audio works, um, people, and it's just a really cool industry to to be in because it's like you get to see like all the inner workings of live performances and, um um stage setups and all that and i also le- uh, learned like a lot of useful tricks um from bands that come in nice um for either their live performances or sound design or sound production like it was just really cool just a lot of great experience nice and you get to meet a lot of cool people even if you don't get to meet the artists which more like oh uh, which more than likely you will never meet the off uh, meet yeah. the artists at all but all the like all their stage hands production guys they're so cool we have a lot of fun it's yeah it's it's hard work though oh yeah no doubt i mean like i ever since i started <laughs> started this you know whenever i go to a venue now i look at the mixers and stuff like that and it's all very intriguing to me now and i definitely like i thought about like maybe even like taking it a step up and learning how to handle like the bigger mixers and things like that now, speaking of like moving equipment and things like that, you work with Capital per- Percussion and Backline Rentals? Yes, that's definitely more on the techie aspect of what I want to do. And that's what I really want to focus on right now because I have a lot of fun with that. I'm, obviously, I'm a drummer, so it's like being in that warehouse surrounded by all that equipment mm. is just like heaven kid in a candy store pretty much but <laughs> you, I never... you text the band chat all the time like yo i just saw this awesome shit it's yeah like but i can't touch it <laughs> right i can't touch it yeah. i can't play it i'm just like Fuck. You have to look Fuck. At it. <laughs> i just gotta look at it like <laughs> the drool pouring out of my mouth like a waterfall um i just kind of wanted y'all to talk about like the importance of bands like sharing equipment and how it's beneficial to each other and making a show run smoothly because that's kind of like that's kind of what they do is like moving equipment around and yeah we uh we we are personally firm believers in gear sharing and stuff like especially it shows it just makes everything run so much smoother but you run into this problem where one band in a scene will be the one that will like backline like once or twice and then they're expected to do that yeah. so it's just like like yeah we it always falls it's like someone has to do it and it feels like like there's just some people it always falls on because they're like the nice ones that are like yeah i'll provide yeah. but right yeah like there's nothing wrong with with like backlining frequently it's just like you know it should be a thing that like everyone contributes for because it's all a team effort getting a show to run smoothly is like a team effort no doubt i've definitely fallen into that trap because pretty much every band that i've been involved in everybody knows that i supply the kit for backline (laughs) so everybody's just like oh austin can get the kit and i'm just like i guess (laughs) yeah like we never mind it's never like it's never a huge deal it's just something we've noticed where it's like huh we 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 do this pretty frequently it's kind of comical at some points like like i'm just like we just get asked to to backline and we're just like yeah god damn it but it's like 
it's so, funny. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like it's, we we don't mind. We never mind because yeah. we know it helps out the 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 bigger picture. So oh yeah, exactly. And uh, kind of touching back on going to Sheffield, um, how important do you think it is for kids to go to a school like that if they want to get into their passion? And how can that kind of school help a kid looking to climb the ladder in music? It's very very important. If you see an opportunity, take it. Take it, take it, fucking take it. Because there are so many different avenues for this kind of industry. And you and it's like whatever one that you can get involved in, whether it's like someone you know personally or um, like a school that you can go to. Music schools, audio production schools, all those kinds of all those kinds of um, schools and programs that are involved with the industry are so fucking useful even if you don't get to meet the high-end artists high-end producers and engineers you get to meet a whole bunch of people in your class and that is also really important so because those are the network too yeah pretty much those are the friends that you're gonna make because they are gonna be the big dogs like two years from now gotcha yeah, connections are super important like mm-hmm. you could like I, I started out like i didn't go to like a music school or anything i just like i did it completely like just taught myself because like I didn't have the money to like go to college or anything but uh like having YouTube and just the internet is like so nice just because you have this like immense wealth of information at your fingertips and like but the thing you don't get learning that way is the connections that you would get at like Sheffield per se because dude like connections that's how you get anywhere oh yeah you have to know people or else you won't get anywhere oh yeah you don't want to be pushy though because it's like yeah absolutely i've seen i've seen a lot of people and i've also fallen victim to this many a times is that the connection the connections you make are great but you gotta read the room you gotta read the people you gotta know like who who wants to talk to you who doesn't want to talk to anybody at all who you can really make connect uh, make connections with and possibly get on a big show and you got to know if you're like being pushy or not because if you're being pushy you're not going to get anywhere and the industry is small right. so people will talk oh right. yeah you, like you got to know basically how to sound professional how to look professional not seem like some kind of like fan or just right some, like, yeah kid who doesn't know what he's talking about right yeah you know carrying yourself the right way is important mm-hmm. like just the way you carry yourself can get you in rooms that people who even have the qualifications but carry themselves the wrong way might not get right yeah like there there are definitely people that are overly confident like even if they got no place in no stake in the scene at the moment or the not just the scene just in the industry in general and it's you really got to how do i say this um you really just gotta be persistent but not be annoying sometimes being annoying helps but you really got it, it. It makes a lot more sense in my head, but it's just like, yeah, just be persistent. Yeah, I know what you're saying because, yeah. like, when I was working electrical, I worked under this dude who was who's very stringent. You know what I mean? If you were fucking up, he would tell you immediately. And I I was working under one of the other like uh, journeymen basically, uh-huh. and uh, it was just me, him, and this other kid, right? His helper. And dude was much chiller than the guy that I was working under. So, like, I'm used to, like, having to always be working every minute. Like, I can't be just standing around. So, them two are talking and stuff. And, like, I'm tying in boxes, which is basically, like, getting all the wires spliced together and stuff like that. Getting it ready for uh, the drywall. That way Mm -hmm. they can go in and put the plugs and switches in later. So, basically, I needed these wire nuts, which is what you use to twist wires together. So I asked him, I'm like, yo, you got the uh, wire nuts for me to uh, do these boxes? And he's like, yeah, I got you in a minute. He keeps talking, keeps talking, and I'm like kind of standing there. I'm like, yo, you got those wire nuts? And he's like, chill out, dude. He's like, I like that you're enthusiastic. That's good, but chill out. Yeah. It's kind of like what y'all were saying. You know, you, it, it's good to be enthusiastic, but sometimes it can be a right. little too There's much. a sweet yeah. spot. And like like you said, it's like you just got to know who you're talking to mm-hmm. and like who you got to just read the vibe off of a person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pick your battles, essentially. Yeah. All right. Last topic on uh, musical background, and it's, again, kind of with the schools and stuff like that. I wanted y'all's thoughts on like how the education system, like public schools, they almost seem to like discourage kids, I feel, from going into the arts. They tell you like that it's not realistic. And also, like, when it comes to, like, schools getting budget cuts, usually the arts is, like, the first 
group to get budget cuts. It's so fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, it, it's one of those things that, like, I feel like the school systems will always think that, like, uh, just, like, the main subjects you learn are, are the ones that should be prioritized because the arts aren't as easily profitable because yeah. that's something that you have to, like, you either make it or you don't. Yeah. And, like... Anything else you learn in school, like, that's not arts-related, you can pretty much take into a career. But it sucks, though, because arts are important. Like, without art, like, life would be so boring. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. It's like, what is there to dream about if exactly, there's no arts, yeah. dude? Oh, yeah, yeah, you got exactly. a good point with that. It's so stupid because it's just like... Yeah, like you said, like, the arts is not an easy industry to get into. But I feel like that's why those types of classes should be prioritized more... And have like better curriculum so it's people are much more prepared to get into these industries yeah because by the time you're done high school your counselor's in your ear like oh don't do this this isn't gonna get you anywhere so yeah. it's like way more discouraging so yeah. but no doubt now you mentioned austin like that you haven't really used your certificate from sheffield that much so i had a question about like getting your jobs at ram's head and fillmore and i my question was was it your education at sheffield that gave you these opportunities mm -hmm. absolutely it, it was because it's like they were they're really tight with the school obviously they're really tight with um a whole bunch of other schools because it's just like they're always looking for new hires because um one thing about like working as a stagehand or a sound guy just really anything is that you're constantly being asked to go on tour with people because really good hands really good um sound guys lighting guys are always in demand right so you got so they're always looking for new hires some people just get sick of the job and i'm just like i don't want to fucking do this anymore yeah so yeah absolutely um the school got me those opportunities, even though I haven't used the certificate that much, meaning like I haven't used like my skills that I learned gotcha. um, working in the classrooms. Um, even I'm hoping to start utilizing them more. So I'm going to try practicing by myself. Yeah, that's the whole thing about like getting a degree or a certificate. It's like when you really start thinking about it, you're like, how am I using this degree? Oh, yeah. You know, I think it's a lot of the time, it's just like a bragging rights thing. It's yeah. basically to be able to go, oh, I completed this. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, I, I feel like often the people that don't go to schools, they, some of them are more competent. You know what I mean? Or they're better. Oh, yeah. yeah. But sometimes it, sometimes they had to sift through, <clears throat> like, a whole bunch of garbage just to get to the point where they are. Because yeah. learning everything off of YouTube, like, purely off of YouTube, is impossible yeah. and annoying. Because everybody has a different method of how they do things. And sometimes you're never going to find the answer that you're looking for. One thing about um, the audio industry, like the live sound industry, is that it is 99% troubleshooting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's funny because, like, whenever I have trouble editing or anything like that, it's like I will look up the answer. I'll, like, look it up. I'll question it. And like nothing that's online works, and then all I got, I just have to fuck around with it for like an hour, yeah. and then it's like, oh, this is how. I yeah, fuck yeah. I, I always hate that, man. When like <laughs> like everything, you're like, okay, this should work, and then it doesn't, and then yeah. you have to like dig into forums and like figure it out, <laughs> yeah. and then, dude, yeah, it's it's obnoxious, but oh, yeah, and it makes you feel stupid, like when it's just <laughs> yeah. one, when you're just like one input off. <laughs> oh god, yeah, dude. All right, before the uh, bedroom floor discussion, I kind of wanted to talk about the other bands that you're in or that you've been a part of. Austin, I kind of first met you when you were in Cadaver Dogs. I was not in Cadaver Dogs. You weren't? No, that was Tommy. Oh. Tommy Spence. <laughs> really? What? Were you play? Did you play at the Weekend at Birdie show? No, I didn't play there. I was just there. Ah. Yeah. Huh. I just kind of sworn you were playing there. No shit. Tommy and I kind of have, like, similar mannerisms, so I, I would assume that... You would probably... Yeah, yeah, okay. So that is my mistake. But I do want to talk about that show because... Um, am I correct or were you kind of newer to that like hardcore scene at the time? Definitely newer to that scene. I was in a pop punk band for a while called On Air. That... So... Basically, my whole story with that band is that... That's how I met um, Caleb and Lauren. Okay. And... Actually, Caleb was the first person that I met that I really, that really, like, 
stuck with me throughout our entire like music quote unquote career like in the local scene and we've just been buddies ever since so shout out caleb he's really pushed me to become the musician that i am he's today. a great guitarist dude he right he's so good man dude he's, he's the one that up. he's the one that really like tried to get me into like metalcore hardcore like it was he it was, if it wasn't for him i probably wouldn't be as good of a drummer as i am now so yes. shout out caleb so my point with that also, was like i knew that you were in that like sort of pop punk genre um so, and I remember at the show, you like you came up to me and was talking about like the moshing and stuff like that and the crowd killing and whatnot. Now, since being a part of Bedroom 4, <laughs> have you gotten more accustomed to these kind of shows and oh, stuff? Oh, absolutely. So for, <laughs> so, for, so for Lauren's birthday, um, also shout out Lauren, literally one of my best friends of all time, literally my musical comrade in arms. Uh, we went to um, Cafe 611 to see one of our favorite bands, Entheos, for their birthday, their 21st birthday. And that was one of the most fun shows I've ever had in my life. Like, you can tell. I'm a small dude. So, Me too, so, I, so, I, so I was just jumping uh, jumping in the pit. I was getting thrown everywhere. It was the most fun time I've ever had in my life. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. I know what that's like being the small guy. In the <laughs> you really got to show out because... You gotta you compensate. Yeah, dude, exactly. The, the sound guy at that show, this big dude just like picked me up, put me on his shoulders and started like twirling me around yeah, dude, at people, that show. People will like pick you up and like they'll start kicking their <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah, I love that kind of shit, dude. It's funny because it's like everybody's just having fun. Yeah, man. Oh and it's God. like, it's it's like consensual hurting each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like you're, you're not trying to hurt each other. Yeah. But... It's almost kind of fun when that's, you do. Yeah, that's how I feel about like 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 hardcore dancing and stuff. Like people think it's like people trying to hurt each other. It's no, like, no it's not like that. There are people that will take advantage of that and uh -huh. and, and try to like actually hurt people. But like if, if it's not targeted, then like do your thing, you know. And like, I think like crowd killing gets a bad rap because I think people need to understand most people are crowd killing their friends. Like, <laughs> no, exactly. Just going up yeah, to people yeah. I will only ever do that to like my friends, and I don't even actually like punch them. I'll just like no, do like the fake exactly. punch shit. Yeah, like, yeah, but man. I think yeah. I think it's funny. Like, uh, like when I was seeing like YouTube videos for the first time of like crowd killing, two stepping, hardcore dancing. That's I was just thought, shit, I just thought it was so. I just like it's fun. It yeah. looks fun, but I always thought it was funny. Is he like karate in the pit, yo? <laughs> karate in the pit's my vibe, though. I love that shit so yeah. fucking much. It, you definitely, like, have to... It's like you take a step up from push pits to hardcore pits. Yeah, yeah. And at first, you have to just be a bystander. Yeah. And you have to get used to that <laughs> environment. Because, like, I remember first seeing people, like, flailing their limbs and shit. I'm like, whoa. Because yeah. with a push pit, you basically just... Jump yeah, you just right go in and just like no, yeah. you can't do that at a nope, hard. You'll get hurt. Show. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Fast. Dude, some people will think like they'll they'll see that and be like, oh, I can do that, and they'll just run in and not read the room at all, and then they just get whacked and they get mad, and it's like, well, you didn't read the room, bro. Like, yeah, I was walking out of Mosh Against Addiction, and I was like walking alongside the pit, not looking at my peripheral, and then I just caught a fucking arm, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I should have been looking. Yeah. Maybe don't walk alongside the pit. <laughs> At the Pol at the Polaris show that we went to, when Polaris's set came on, um, I accidentally got sucked into the wall of death. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I fucking died. I got knocked hard on my ass. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah, bro. I haven't I haven't had any super close calls yet. Luckily, man. But people get really hurt. My brother yeah. broke his leg like right before his graduation. He slipped on some beer and then someone accidentally just snapped his leg. Oh, oh shit. yeah, that dude. Sucks, it was that a man. Devil Wears Prada show? <laughs> of course. Dude. Yeah. It, they, just shit like that. They rule, dude. Oh my god. I love that. Shit like that makes you very, very cautious. Yeah. Right. Um, you have to be. Yeah. Now you do play for Citric. Yes, I love Citric's so good. I fucking love Citric. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, we we're trying to work on new material and like recording new material, so hopefully all that comes out. Citric is so much fun. I love it because like even though like the new stuff that we've written is a lot more heavy and it's a lot more bombastic, just like Bedroom Floor, there are two completely different mindsets and Lauren will agree with me on this. Um when the both of us play in Citric, uh we just kind of just like do whatever the fuck we want but bedroom floor is all about precision gotcha yeah okay nice 
And you play for Knife Spitter, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I joined that band a few years ago. Uh, uh, they Their vocalist had moved away, uh, like a few states away, and they still wanted to like play shows and stuff. So, And I, I'm... I'm close friends with a few of the members nice. uh or i nice was like rips yeah <laughs> so i uh i hit up anthony who was like the old vocalist uh he plays guitar now but he uh asked me to jam with them and i ended up working out and stuff so i've been in that band for a few years and like we're uh we're kind of like not super active right now we're kind of going through like a rebuild okay but we we got some like I, it's the classic like big things coming soon but yeah. like <laughs> at some point in the next like year or so you will you will definitely be hearing more about a lot of that bands band. go through stuff like exactly that, i remember like back during like covid or back when i was sick we were talking about like getting bedroom floor off the ground with like me on drums i remember that and you joined nice better and i and i was just like two hardcore bands how's this gonna work because but then i actually took a listen to knife spitters like whoa this is completely they're, they're very different. different they're very different knife spitters way more like like grindy and like and like like more black metal influence right. and like just the fast like blast beats and shit oh yeah uh but bedroom floor is like warped tour metal core bro. yeah <laughs> fucking that's my shit it's like <laughs> it's like warped tour metal core but not warped tour metal yeah it's core. like hardcore adjacent like it's yeah. like it, it's got like it's not like Metalcore gets a really bad rap because there's a lot of like cringy metalcore. But like yeah. we, like I try when I write music, like I try to just like, it's just I just write like what I like writing, and it happens to just have a lot of hardcore influence and stuff. So a lot I feel like it gets the best of both worlds in yeah. that regard. I was talking to some uh, some of our friends like um, Jesus and Aaron from the Dead Ringers mm-hmm. and Ali, and they were basically uh, saying like, yeah, I wouldn't say uh, they were basically saying like, yeah, I don't think Bedroom Floor is metalcore. I think you guys are more melodic hardcore. Yeah, honestly, yeah. like when I was listening, I kind of thought similar things. But yeah. dude, the subgenres of metal get dude, so crazy yeah. that yeah. I just categorized yeah. most of it. <laughs> Right, into a big and category. we're bedroom floor is a weird case because because like when I write like I'm not like okay I'm gonna write like a metalcore song I just write whatever I'm inclined to write right. and it ends up sounding like a lot of different subgenres like into one that's so how, that's how it should be honestly yeah it keeps it interesting like I don't uh-huh. want to write the the same old shit I don't want to be super formulaic like formulaic to a certain degree obviously for like songwriting but not like so like cookie cutter cut and paste that it's like exactly and i'm excited and i'm excited for when we start like all writing collectively as a band because with every single one of our influences i feel like we could come up with some cool shit whatever we end up writing next year is going to be like it's going to be interesting because everyone is just they have all the members of this band like i got very fortunate in uh the in the the members of this band because like I had a lineup before and then we kind of stopped playing shows and then I was like, okay, I want to get this off the ground again. And I just basically snatched on air and yeah. made them my live band. And then Logan joined who was best friends with Caleb and they're both guitarists. So like they're on like a similar wavelength. It's just, it was something that worked out super well. Uh-huh. And like, so now I'm actually really excited that now it's going to be like a collaborative writing process because all of them are insane musicians and like bring so much to the table that like whatever we write it's gonna be fucking cool i'm excited and it really works well because of just like the chemistry too like you were saying like chemistry is important dude with caleb and logan being best friends and also with caleb lauren and i we've been jamming for like three years up to that point i got very fortunate and it's just like even though we didn't really fuck with the direction that on air was going in completely at the time we still had like that little inkling of like, oh yeah, this is what we want to do. We wanted to write like a little more complex stuff. We were really into like easy core math rock, like kind of like Belmont at the time. But now since we're playing in bedroom floor, where it's like, it's basically that just heavier. Right. And (laughs) we're just having a blast with it. And it's so much fun. Cool. You already kind of talked about how bedroom floor line, like the lineup came to be. I saw in a post that, like, practice consisted of, like, video games and uh, bonding. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Talk about just what the normal practicing and recording vibes and what they're like. So so that post was actually uh, with our old lineup. Uh, I used to drum for a band called Water Taxi. Uh, and the, uh, the guitarist and the bassist, Steven and Tanner, were the other two members of Bedroom Floor. And we used to, like... 
like when we would practice we would just like we'd like we'd get stuff done but like you know we were just like chilling and stuff but like compared to now with this new lineup when it, when we go to practice it's just like we we get the shit done yeah. like we, gotcha. we still just chill and play video games like this right. is this is the kind of shit that I've wanted from a band since the very beginning like obviously Caleb Lauren and I we were all we were all like pretty tight and on air but it's like it's nothing compared to right now where we like after shows we all just hang out together we all laugh right. we all just have so much yeah, fun being friends with your band is super important like just because again it's a chemistry thing where like if you if you're not getting along with your bandmates it's gonna show in your performance oh yeah which is like it's super super paramount for your success mm -hmm. absolutely but like like caleb and logan flipping each other off like in that one <laughs> verse of pestilence oh, yeah. like i think that shit's funny it's it's great and it adds charm to the set personality yeah like you don't want to you don't want a band just being like just like just like standing, standing there just around, playing just like, this stuff but yeah. also but also you don't want like everybody to just not be in sync with each other right you gotta have fun when you play uh -huh. that's something that i've picked up on like since interviewing Sukawa and deep rest and then i went and saw deep rest i noticed i I'd really noticed like the chemistry between bands now and how they just fuck with each other all yeah. the time like literally at the deep rest show i went to at the auto bar a few weeks ago I fucking, they just kept like interrupting. Was it the Zayo thought crime yeah, show yeah, oh yeah. my god dude Whew, i wish i would have went to that <laughs> they kept like they kept like strumming the guitars and shit as uh, Trey was trying to talk, and he's like, "Man, they do this shit every practice, every practice." Dude, and, Trey's so nice. Oh hell yeah! All man. these dudes are so nice. Yeah, shout out! I'm actually gonna be uploading their episode today. Hell yeah! yeah I'm gonna check that to out for sure. Oh, fuck it's a yes. long one. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna get into the uh, bedroom floor discography. Um, excluding the instrumental tracks. Yeah. Um, now, we already talked about how you're in charge of writing the lyrics. It will be collaborative eventually, but uh, talk about like your history with writing. How long have you used it to express your feelings, and did you take an extra interest in writing at school at all? Uh, so, I, I kind of... I didn't start writing lyrics until my senior year. That was when, that was when I really started, like... I, uh, I ended up getting an independent study uh, mod where I basically could just sit in the electronic music room and just like do something music related. So okay. I just started like writing songs. Nice. Um, and once I had like a few songs together, I started writing lyrics and like they were not the best lyrics at all, <laughs> but it's, you got to start somewhere. Oh yeah. And like, course. yeah, I eventually just like being friends with Steven in water taxi. He, he's like a rapper too. So he, he's, he, he's very like, very picky about lyrics and like just making sure that like every line you write is is super important and stand out and so uh just as i've gotten more into it i kind of i like to treat it like poetry like like if right. i'm writing words i want them to like matter and have some sort of meaning like not sounding like i'm trying too hard but it's like a fine balance of like natural emotion and just trying to be like poetic but yeah i i it's such a pet peeve of mine when like lyricists just throw whatever on songs and it's yeah. just like you can tell that it's like lazy yeah i can say yeah. you definitely achieved that man i, I told you. nate powell the same thing man i, I was like nate dude powell. both okay. of you write like it's like almost beautiful when you read it on its own <laughs> it's like hardcore and metal a lot of people that don't listen to it can't understand it yeah. at all and they just think it's like Rah, rah, devil yep, music yep. but like yo if you actually go and read these lyrics man like hardcore and metal is some of the most deep written stuff yeah. ever man it's super emotional people people hear the screaming and think that it's just like just anger and just like it's the same thing with people rap being and, crazy it's huh? the same thing with rap and hip hop too yeah because it's like nobody like I don't know it's just like so many genres like rap hip hop metal hardcore they get such a bad rap because of like the vocal styles when there's actually like a serious art and poetry behind all that yeah yeah no doubt and i mean obviously it's like you said some some musicians don't take it that serious right. that's probably what gives it a bad rap you know because you got like you got all this like shoot 'em up fuck bitches rap yeah and then you got some actual melodic rap yeah that is speaking real shit but i think people got to realize like all that stuff even if it's not like the best thing to glamorize or whatever it's like that's real life people yeah. gotta realize yeah. like that's what they grew up around they grew up around drug dealing and people dying and it's like they're just sharing what they know yeah you know yeah so and like yeah that's like 
I don't know. People people are gonna write about their experiences and like what they want to write about, and like it doesn't like music doesn't have to be just like super serious and poetic. You can write like whatever you want. It's just you you can tell when it's when it's organic and when it's not. Yeah. yeah. But there's the always important thing. There's yeah. always room for mindless funny. Oh yeah, like like that new Lil Yachty song that's <laughs> blowing up everywhere. That shit is so funny. Yeah. Dude. That shit is so funny. Like I had the walk and pull. Like, yeah. <laughs> I literally was watching memes last night, and that was like in multiple of them. I was like, "Oh god!" Like, like the like that an, like that anime crying face screaming at the sky on every character, like those slideshows. I think it's oh, so yeah. fucking funny. The meme yeah. I saw was someone had like one of those balancer pro like massage things, and they were like digging in their back, and he's like, "Ah, oh, the walk." <laughs> <laughs> oh so my funny. god. All right, we're going to get into Endless Insomnia, Endless Hysteria Ooh, throwback. EP. Throwback. Oh, we're going to go. So what I like to do is I like to go through all the songs, and I like I pick out some lyrics that I like, okay. and then if I can like find something to relate it to. So both of you feel free. Obviously, you talk about what inspired you and what you were, what your intentions were, and you, whatever. I'll basically just comment on how hard the lyrics are. <laughs> 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 all right, so for Curse. Constant defeat, laying on the floor, asking God why he would curse you with this constant suffering and pleading no more. My note was like, if you grow up religious, you often wonder why does God or the universe allow such bad things to happen, especially to good people? And it like, it makes the idea of this all positive God seem like almost implausible. So like, how did those emotions play into writing? Uh, so like when I wrote those lyrics, uh, it was like right out of high school, I, uh, like throughout high school and stuff like i was kind of super like pessimistic and like went through like a lot of bouts of depression and stuff so like in those lyrics you can like just see how like they're those my old lyrics are super straightforward like it's just literally like i just brain vomit about how i'm feeling and uh religion is one of those things that like was constantly like you know like i don't i don't know if i really vibe with this because like again like all these bad things happen to good people but you know, I've never been, like, a super religious person, but, like, I, I feel like there's some higher power out there, yeah, but yeah. I don't know who the fuck it is, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's just, like, that, yeah, that, yeah, that line was basically just, like, about my, my feelings of conflict about religion and its, like, purpose and stuff, right. but. Do you have any comments? Nah, that was just hard. (laughs) Um, Heartbeat. My heart beats out of my chest as you speak your words. Deep a void opens from inside me. And I like this emotion I thought I forgot how to feel. I kind of like related that, I guess, to like, you know, if you go from not being with anybody for a while and then to growing a connection with someone, it's like these feelings come back and you're like, shit, I forgot that I even knew how to feel love like that. Yeah. It's something you just, like, like repress in your brain. And then when it comes back up again, it's like, is this, like, actually real? It's really hard to process it. Oh, but yeah. Yeah, that... I, uh, I I got a few songs that are just, like, inherently, like, love songs, which is really funny because, like, that's, it's screaming music. But, that, <laughs> but the, you know. That's the thing, though. Why can't screaming music have, like, more love songs? That shit's amazing. Yeah, I mean, people can relate to it. Exactly, you know yeah. I mean? it's, it's, I, it's emotional. Like, that's yeah. the point. Like, it's not, like, like metal doesn't have to just be angry. It's no. a, people are screaming not because they're angry all the time, but... It's emotions. It sounds exactly. fucking hard. Yeah, exactly. That's why, that's, exactly. See, that's why I tell people. <laughs> <laughs> the shit just sounds hard, man. Exactly. Shit makes me want to get up. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stand right. up. Punch right. something. Like exactly. I, like I swear to God, that uh, that ending of Bankai has got me like <laughs> like people that go to church for like those contemporary Christian music. Just like hands up. Bro. Just like. I had to throw yeah, strings. I believe. Yes. <laughs> yes, Lord. Sometimes you got to throw strings in a song, bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think Trey described some of like hardcore music as just like beat your grandma up <laughs> <laughs> shit that makes you want to fight your mom you know what i mean yeah <laughs> why can't, why can't why can't hardcore music just have a little bit of emotion just a tad well i think a lot of it does well yeah you just got to look into the lyrics yeah, which exactly. a lot of people don't do yeah. and i feel like the more you read lyrics and listen to it the more you're able to understand when listening to it in the future yeah. absolutely yeah one, one of my favorite songs because of that like from a local band is uh curtain call by gradual slip Whoa. shout out gradual slip They're that the is boys, my bro, favorite the song by them that is a beautiful song they're so nice. good man oh my god 
right, we're gonna get into the self-titled now. Uh, for Resonate, I have, well, the whole lyrics was pretty short. I, a soul that has departed, taken far too soon. A man never forgotten, a man I never knew, but I still feel your pulse resonating with me. I still feel your pulse. Why did you have to leave? I was just wondering, like, who is this song, like, dedicated to? Um, so that song is about my, uh, my, my father, uh, my real dad. He, uh, he passed away when I was two uh, of cancer, so, like, I didn't really know him. But it's one of those things, like, growing up, like, I hear things about him all the time, and, like, I never got to personally know him. But that song is just basically about how I'm, like, man, I really wish I could, like, have a conversation with him at least, or just, like, have known him, but... Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that, it's, like, a short set of lyrics, but, like, that has so much emotional impact to me, because, yeah. like, I just, like, love my dad, but. Oh, yeah. yeah, does it, know. does it feel therapeutic to play that song? Um, uh, I yeah, I wants. feel like any song, any song, really, that has, like, that <laughs> amount of emotional weight is just, like, like, just getting to perform it is, is so nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, that song specifically, we've only ever actually performed once, mm. uh, the, the first show with the new lineup, we played, uh, I, we opened with that song into Fracture, the second song, and, uh, it's, like, it's, since it's, like, a <laughs> trap song, it's kind of hard to, like, implement, because it, like, it's kind of weird just having a backtrack and me saying something and then full band, but right. I definitely want to find a way to incorporate that song, because I really love that song a lot, right. and it would be dope to... I feel like the first, I feel like the first set with the new lineup opening with that song really fucking cool i yeah. feel like it's like uh, i don't know how to describe it it's just like it's almost like a movie my yeah. life a movie for yeah. real <laughs> <laughs> and like when i recorded that album i uh like i i didn't have a lineup at the time so like i never got to play a show for it so i was like if i ever do play a show i would want to open the set with resonate just because like it just feels right so i got to do it for that show oh yeah nice but... all right fracture Am I going mad? Am I too gone for reason? I can't forgive love myself it. for falling to this mental treason. I love that line so fucking <laughs> Yeah, much. dude, Thank that's you. what I, that's, that was my key line too because it's like, what I took from that, it's like depressive thoughts. It almost feels like you're betraying yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's hard because like, like you, when you're going through depression like that, it, it's, it's difficult because you don't know, like no one wants to feel that way. No. Nope. And so, but you feel that way because like chemical imbalance, whatever. And it's just hard because it's just so conflicting in your head because you're like, oh, I shouldn't feel like this. It feels like my brain is trying to sabotage me, but. Yeah, exactly. I just love that line so much and just like how most of the song was pretty melodic, like open chords, but then it just gets to that palm muting, like fucking chugginess with that kind of line there. It's just like, it really accentuates how deeply like traumatic that mindset can be yeah yeah no doubt because it's like you said it's like nobody wants to feel that way no. so when you do feel that way and in the back of your head you're like this is bullshit what yeah the fuck? yeah but you have no choice right yeah your your, your brain is gonna send the signals it's going to like yeah. but and you just have to be able to deal with it so no doubt oh, yeah um victim featuring milo stricker Shout out, yes. Milo. Shout out Milo. Shout out Milo. Toxic Crew isn't a band anymore, but he's starting like a new project. But he he's he lives like up in New York, so okay. but he's cool. the homie. I love that man. Alright, and I have given everything, the world is yours. Silver spoon, silver platter, but the incident's not yours. A sliver of inconvenience, your life becomes a mess, you start raging a fury. So I'm assuming this is like about people with a victim mentality and people I guess who grew up without a safety net. I'm quoting Butcher's dozen lyrics. Unlike yeah. you, I don't have this safety net that lets you sink this fucking deep. Now, it's I remember going to school and going to work and having, like, real issues going on. And then I see others complain over the most menial shit, things that they have choice over. That's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, exactly. So just kind of talk about that and, you know, the victim mentality. Yeah, I, uh, I wrote that. I wrote those lyrics. Uh, uh, I was working my job... Uh, Texas Roadhouse, I'm still there. That's that's my nine to five. Shout out so, Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, uh, but I was a I was a busser at the time. Uh, Buttery biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. But yeah, I uh I would just hear people, like I would hear my coworkers, like just other like high schoolers, just talking about like like just like complaining about like having to pay for their own gas money and just like shit. Where I'm like like I come from a like a family that wasn't super well off, so I've right. like w worked for everything I have and like. 
these people just get everything handed to them and i just like i'm just like dude that's bullshit like i, I like obviously like i'm not better than anyone else like just because i like have worked for stuff but it's just really frustrating when you hear people complain about stuff that to you is like like why are you complaining yeah, about this yeah, like I've that been, is a, such a first world that problem since i was in elementary yeah. school man yeah Fuck you it's just about? so obnoxious if like, you were if you were to hear that complaining like a few months ago when gas price was like five dollars <laughs> yeah. five dollars a gallon i feel like that i feel like victim wouldn't exist <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah it's just people it's like it's that side where it's like like silver spoon like privileged people but also just like yeah the whole safety net thing in general just just yeah yeah people people are ungrateful a lot of times and yeah i just it pisses me off <laughs> yeah like here's the thing like i know i had my safety net broken in like fourth grade just through like family shit and it's like i'm not glad i went through that but at the same time i know it made me the person i exactly, am today and yeah. i can handle a lot more shit than most of these kids because they ain't been through shit yeah right? and it's like i don't think people need bad things to happen to them but at the same time everybody needs to go through some kind of struggle if they want to be great right and it you just helps use, you develop as yeah you gotta use that pain to develop man mm -hmm. yeah you gotta like profit off your pain almost yeah, you know? yeah. profit off of your pain not others pain yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> um pestilence i have addiction to attention you make me fucking sick talk yourself up like you're worth a damn but you're no better than i am and also um you guys uploaded a, a garrett fest live set yeah and uh and, and in the in the beginning right this girl was kind of talking about like how abusers are not going to be tolerated and you mentioned the song i guess being about somebody yeah. you do not have yeah. to get into details you don't want to get into but just I kind of you. talk about what this song's about so that song is about i'm not going to name this person they're like uh, they're they're it's not pub it's public it is public knowledge yeah. uh should but we, should we just do it anyway i mean i'm not going to name drop anybody yeah but uh Bad essentially dude. essentially this person was a they did sound for like a lot of local shows and they're mm. just like huge abuser like just shit person and like uh it was, it's funny because the girl the girl that came up and said all that stuff literally got it got outed for being like a racist piece of shit like oh, wow. like a week later oh, so i was like all right cool but uh <laughs> yeah dude but yeah that that song is just about that person and how like they just like scam people and that they their whole their whole vibe is just like a oh, facade yeah. and they're just like scum i yeah. just don't want to deal with them like i remember for lauren's old band they had that person um doing sound for a show they offered was like yeah i'll do it for free i'll do it for free it's all good and then after the show happened they came up to lauren's like yeah i want a hundred bucks for that that's literally wow. why like the, the <laughs> line in there that's like uh using people to get paid that's what cowards do that's yeah. literally about just about, about to bring doing that, that up yeah, yeah dude. But, but they're also like just a full-on fucking predator this song yeah. was written yeah. this song as i if i remember correctly was written way before all that shit even, yeah like it, it was, was complete public knowledge wow. and it's like you just hear about this shit more and more and more. The person just ran away to Minnesota and just continued to do like shitty things to sh to really good people to the point where they had to like anonymously make a whole Instagram account calling him uh, calling this person out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's some bullshit, man. Fuck but... that guy. No, yep. fuck, no <laughs> fuck this person too. Yeah. It's just literal and anybody like back... them yeah no exactly they're... dude I don't, I don't vibe with that no. shit now they're, they're back in maryland they've been, oh, spo really? they've been oh, spotted on umbc that sucks and li <laughs> literally a friend of mine let's go get them <laughs> no, 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 no i'm serious i'd be down to do it i hope they, i hope they pull up to a show so like we can play that song <laughs> oh i'm still fucking the fuck out <laughs> oh god <laughs> All right, disassociation. Um, my mind is torn between myself and everyone else. A civil war with no end in sight. I kind of wanted some more elaboration on um, my mind is torn between myself and everyone else. Yeah, that uh, that I wrote that song. Uh, I I think I had like just like had an argument with my girlfriend at the time or something, and I was just like, just really torn about like, like, just like what I'm feeling versus being like a people pleaser and thinking about what other people want. And it's just like, it was just a super conflicting, uh, because it's like, do you, do you be selfish and focus on what you want? Or do you just like say, fuck it and put your own wants to the side and just do shit for the, the happiness of everyone else. Which oh, yeah. Being a yes man fucking sucks. And it's something that like, I've gotten, <laughs> I've gotten better with it over the years, but it's still like, 
I'm just like such an anxious person that it's like so hard not to be like that sometimes. Because I'm just like, it's easier just to just make everyone else happy and like whatever. I'll, I'll tank whatever but then you consequences. you give yourself shit for it later. Yeah, and exactly. then you tell yourself like, next time I'm yeah. going to say no. Yeah. And Eventually, then you're like, <sighs> yeah, you just get to a point where you're like, all right, there's a line where like, like, if it's too much to bear, I'm just like, whatever, fuck it. I'm going to, I'm going to be selfish. Yeah. yeah. I relate to that completely. Sometimes you got to be selfish. Dude, that yeah. was like, for that was why for a long time, that was one of my favorite songs to play. Like that was one of, that was like one of the first songs in the new lineup that I had to learn. And it was just so much fun. Not only because the song itself was fun, but because like I actually related to that, uh, to the lyrics in that way. That's good. I love when people are able to relate to the lyrics because I write them about something in my personal life, but it's cool that, like, people can take those lyrics and interpret it in their own way and come up with their own, like, opinions and just, like, feelings about it and stuff. That's what's so great about music, and that's why it's art, because most people go look at a painting, and if you ask five people what that painting means, probably most of them are going to give a different answer. Yeah, so it's the same thing with Two bears (laughs) (laughs) high-fiving. All right, Shake featuring Tyler Beam. Ooh, That's another Shout out Tyler mine. Beam. I love Promise Break. The Beam. <laughs> Dude, he's um, in the last 10 seconds of life now. That shit's crazy, yeah. bro. Oh, my God. I'm so excited to play yeah. with him. Yeah, I, I just want to say Tyler Beam works so hard, and he deserves every ounce of success that he's going to get. Love that guy. King. <laughs> yeah. 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 There we go. Uh, I was like, I meant to use that at the beginning. I was like, I'm going to wait to use that button. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so the lyrics, no dosage of meds, no poison in my veins. Can't get rid of this pain or suppress the oppressor. So I like, I, like, I wanted more elaboration on that. And I guess, what is the oppressor in that? Um, It's kind of more uh, like the other songs on the self-titled where it's just, again, it's just about like, mental health and just like fighting fighting depressive bouts and stuff and like it's just one of those things where like it's like ah i could like smoke weed to try and feel better but it's just not really helping anything it's just escapism and like yeah we'll talk about that yeah so the the oppressor is just is just i guess your brain like your brain just betraying Uh you cool and uh was like the poison in my veins is that a literal like reference to the medication just yeah pretty much just like like drinking or smoking or doing whatever is like you want to do to like try and forget about it but felt gotcha. yeah hard <laughs> <laughs> and then uh crimson a thousand problems you can't rid yourself of a thousand wounds you cannot heal an endless pitfall you can't escape your pleas falling on deaf ears Ooh. that last line is what i that stuck out to me Ooh. so what was that song about that okay crimson crimson's an interesting one that that's the first song i ever wrote oh um uh lyrically i don't think it was but instrumentally it was but that song that whole entire song is about some really like fucked shit that uh happened my senior year of high school my uh my grandfather committed suicide oh. um and i just basically like wrote the song just about like it was one of those things where like obviously like you mourn someone's loss like when that happens but he he like wasn't the best person and like he just like his uh his wife at the time was like a few years older and like relied on him for like uh like like medication and just like relied on him for being able to live and stuff and right. like it just felt like he just like abandoned her and like it was just one of those things it was super conflicting because obviously it's like no one like I didn't want that to happen no. but it's just it 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 makes you think like like damn that was it was kind of selfish but but also, like, I don't know. It, it's so weird. I'm not trying to say that I'm, like, glad I know, it happened. I know what you're but trying yeah, to say. It, it's, super, it's super conflicting. And, like, that song was just me kind of speaking my piece about it, mm-hmm. I guess. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And um, you had a special thanks to Nate Powell and Luke Ziegler for providing a recording space for the album and additional guitar on Curse recorded by Lauren Zanis. Uh, shout out to suck what um was this recorded at the headquarters uh not so uh there was this old uh actually what what did i record i think i had tried to track live drums for it at the headquarters but i didn't uh i like i didn't end up using the takes i just ended up ended up like programming the drums because it gave me better tones but uh but yeah like nate let me use his space I've been chilling with Nate for, for a pretty long time. Hell yeah. Um, Did you say Luke, Luke Ziegler? Yeah, way? I might have pronounced that wrong. It's Zeitler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think Zeitler's Garage uh, is where I also recorded some yeah. stuff. Shout, okay. out, shout out Zeitler. Yeah. Hell yeah. Literally, like, one of my, uh, another big inspiration. He's an insane drummer. He, uh, 
He's the uh, current drummer on Knife Spitter. Yeah. Actually, yeah. He, he, dude's a monster. Oh, yeah. And um, this is like one of several projects that you also released an instrumental version of. And yeah. I was just curious, like, what's the reason for releasing these instrumental albums? Um, so personally, when I listen to a band, like I, I, I like a lot of uh, like progressive metal chords, like the, the twinkly, like flashy shit, right. like, like era and like invent animate and stuff. But like, I love when a band drops an instrumental version because it almost gives you a way to look at the record in a new light. Like you take, mm-hmm. you strip the vocals away and you just see like, the instrumentation which i i fucking love that because I, I also just listen to a lot of like instrumental bands too but gotcha. like but i i did it like on my stuff just because i like hearing the instrumental like without without the vocals on it but also i i know that other people like also have that appreciation so i just like like to give them the option to listen to it that right. way um like yeah. two things on that one i think people get so caught up with the vocals that they forget how important that the rest of the band yeah. is yeah. especially especially drummers I, i've yeah. like heard drummers say specifically like they feel like drumming is like not looked at enough because it's like a huge fundamental part of the band thankfully that's changing a lot more actually thanks to like social media yeah like the drumming scene is huge yeah. on like instagram tiktok it was huge on youtube for a while that was actually one of the main reasons i got back into drums was like watching drum covers on mm. youtube nice it was just like it was just such a cool thing to do because it's just like everybody was just showing off their skills their interpretations of songs and a lot of people that started out like that are now touring with big bands yeah, and shit. Exactly. Yeah. It's great exposure and it gets people really appreciating like what goes into making a song like that. Mm-hmm. Cuz good a good a good framework is everything. You need a good drummer, you need good oh, riffs yeah. and all that. It's oh, absolutely. all super important. A lot of people say that the drummer kind of just makes or breaks the band. Like It could... can, dude. If you don't have a tight drummer live, it's 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 probably the most glaringly obvious thing because right. like if they can't keep time and rhythm then like you're going to sound off. So like if your drummer's bad, then, like, that that's a huge L for you. Oh, but. absolutely. Yeah, and it's, like, I feel like people who play music probably appreciate the instrumentals more, and they, yeah. they like, get more out of it for sure. Um, now we're going to go into Fragile Existence. Yes. Um, death. I'm slaving away for the pay every day. <laughs> we feel that. Yep, that, I'm yep. paving the way just to wither away. I'm draining my faith in a state of decay. I can't wait any longer. I'm going insane. And I just have a note of like how it feels to be working a job just to make ends meet when you have a passion calling you. Yeah. Yeah. That, that whole record is about my uh, consistent feelings of like existential dread and just like fear of death and stuff. And like that specific stanza is just the, like the nine to five, like right. where you work till you die. And it's just like, what's the fucking point? It's yeah. just like, uh, cause like, obviously there is a point. It's just sometimes there's the other side where you're like, Oh, this feels absolutely pointless. Like, I know this is like funding what I want to do, but like, I hate it. Yeah, like, it's, I, it's wish like I, I was saying it. earlier, man, I look at the people that are like retirement age working at this warehouse and I'm like, there's you're like, no, I don't want to be I, like I, that. I'm not, <laughs> It's not, I don't want to, I cannot yeah, die yeah. working there. Right. I refuse. Yeah. That would, that anything would be else. Bad. Yeah. And that's where, that's where most talent and like, that's where most like people who get rep, like recognition, it's because it's not because they want recognition and they want that life. It's because they refuse yeah. to work that other life. Yeah. yeah. I, I really like fragile existence for like the reason where it starts out very melancholy, but still like very emotional and depressing the midway point is just very fucking angry and it's just like full-on existential crisis mode but then like right as um this is not how it ends like finishes it's very motivational compared to the rest of the record even the rest of the song yeah i uh there's like before fragile existence and for most of fragile existence there's a common theme where like a lot of the lyrics are like either self-deprecating or like there's no like there's no resolution to them. It's all pretty much just like, just like negative. Yeah. But uh, in fragile existence, uh, death thirteen and six feet are both like pretty, like pretty dismal. But uh, this is not how it ends. Also being dismal, like it's kind of that song is just kind of the first song I wrote lyrically where it's like, okay, shit sucks, but I want to be above it. I want to get yeah. better. Like it's like I don't want to be a victim anymore. Like fuck that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And then I have a note about like your passion versus your purpose, which is a podcast I listened to recently where they talked about that. And it's like everybody should have a passion that 
they follow and that they ideally want to monetize at some point. Mm -hmm. But people have to realize like that your passion and your purpose are two different things. And a lot of times like your purpose almost has to come first. Yeah. And it can be hard because like your, your purpose might make you kind of unhappy, but it makes the world a better place when you do your purpose. Yeah. So it's, it's conflicting. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. Sometimes yeah. people's passion doesn't even have to be monetary. Sometimes their passion could just be something that they just like to do by themselves, you know? Yeah. And, and that's what they said. They said a passion is something that you like to do and you would be doing it even if you aren't getting paid. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it could be just anything from like making music to playing video games to like building houses and shit. Right. That right. can be people's house. That can be people's passions. And it's just like... I feel like the, I feel like passion and purpose. Did, we, did you say that they were like two completely opposite things, or um, that they had it, to be in one? Well, it's I, it pretty much yeah that they're opposite, um, yeah. but they they do coincide in a way because it's yeah. like Michael Jordan his, his passion was baseball, you know, yeah. and he ended up playing baseball for a little, but his actual purpose was basketball, right? And yeah. that's where he shined in the world. So it's like they do <laughs> coincide, but they are different, and you have to learn how to. Yeah, plenty of strengths. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's because it's just like you could be. Because uh, it's just like you could just be playing video games for the rest of your life as like your passion, as like something that makes you comfortable, happy, and safe. But then your purpose is just like you're working a nine to five job, and you, people people get settled with that kind of life. Yeah. Like they don't like they don't care. And I honestly more power to them. Yeah, right, no yeah. doubt. And it's like you said, uh, I, I can say from personal experience that like with the people who build houses and stuff like that, they definitely are passionate about it. Because uh-huh. like yeah. when I wired houses and stuff like that, it's like there's electricians who have a mindset of, oh, it's going to be behind the drywall so it doesn't have to be neat. But when you take your time to run everything nicely, your boxes look all nice. Mm. It, it's an art form, man. And right, it, takes, yeah. it takes years and years to like be able to build a house in perfection. Yeah. So it is definitely a passion for people. A house is like a body. The walls are like bones. The fucking, um, the wires and piping are like veins. Like that's uh, shout out haunting of Hill House. Shout out Mike Flanagan because that's what I like. Kind of got that idea that's, from that's that. <laughs> nah, that's actually interesting, right? Because like a few weeks ago, a month ago, or something, right? Uh, I was on some mushrooms. And I, was, <laughs> I was in the bathroom, dude, and like, first of all, mirrors are trippy. Yeah. And never going. I, I was like turning the light on and off, but like I could like literally hear the humming of the electricity, and I could like hear the water going through the house. That's it's yeah. That makes trippy, you feel. Dude. Yeah, no, that that would. I'd be like, whoa, this house is, it's monster house. It's, uh, it's alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that just made me think of it, what you yeah. were saying. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a cool analogy. I've never, like, thought of it like that. But. Oh, yeah. Well, they kind of, in the, in the show, they kind of um, kind of fed into that, making, like, the house its own character. It's not, right, yeah. not like in the way monster house is, but in the way, like, it's sort of just, like, it's so evil and haunted, it basically consumes everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah, houses have energy. Like, mm-hmm. especially a house where something really fucked up happened. Yeah. You walk in, and you're like, oh, the energy in yeah. this bitch is not cool. Just oh, get goosebumps yeah. immediately, and oh, you're yeah. like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the energy is what makes houses a living thing, probably. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I wasn't a superstitious guy for a long time, but a lot of, uh, but... Um, ever since I started, like, being friends with and then eventually dating my partner, Danny. Shout out, Danny. I love you. Um, they've gotten me into more, like, the supernatural, the, um, sort of paranormal and the higher power kind of things. And I'm just like, this shit is convincing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it I, It depends on what you watch, because there's a lot of corny shit yeah, out there. Yeah, for then, sure. There's definitely some shit that happens out there fucking like people get fucking possessed and exorcist yeah. and shit dude that, that's why i'm agnostic man because it's just like i don't have definitive like beliefs in anything it's like mostly just whatever happens whatever waits for me on the other side whatever higher power that is it just is and i'll accept yeah. it regardless that's how i am it's like i don't know what the fuck's out there i but... think the idea of heaven and hell like I, I i think they're real places but only because of people's energy because yeah. so many people believe in it that their energy if they believe they were good or if they know they were bad then their energy is automatically going to go to heaven yeah. or hell so it's like i feel like somewhere in the universe there's just a collective fucking thing of energy of all these people that have died and that's heaven essentially mm. it's just all this damn energy because 
that's what most people believe. Most people believe in a heaven or a hell, but right. it's like, it's like no one knows. Yeah, that's yeah, how I am. Knows. I'm like, we'll fuck around and find right, out. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We'll, I'll find out when I find out. Have you seen that chart on Instagram where it's like this dude and he literally has like a statistical graph and he's like, so the more you fuck around, <laughs> the, the more, more you find, find out. out. <laughs> it's so fucking true. <laughs> yeah. So six feet, six feet underwhelmed. I can't help it. You can't help me. I can't help myself. I built this hell myself so I could burn. And this is like it's you my favorite line. I always hide behind the smoke. Was that metaphorical or is it literal? Like in a sense of what we were talking about of like smoking and stuff you know, like it that? could be both actually. Uh, that song specifically was written by Steven. Um, he, I I can't think off top uh, if there are any other songs that he wrote lyrics for, but like he. Uh, yeah, that he wrote lyrics for that song and that like those lines, the wordplay he does in that shit is crazy. And I think that that line specifically, it could yeah, it could be both ways, like like hiding behind the smoke metaphorically and literally. I didn't yeah. realize that that one like callback line was "You can't help me." I yeah. thought it was also just like "I can't help it" no. as well. Damn. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's super like it's six feet's cool because the song is just it's just three hooks in that one line yeah uh and but like that hook is so like like memorable like just the way steven wrote the lyrics for that it's just the way the words play with each oh, other yeah. it's super dope it's, i love it a lot it's short but sweet exactly it gets yeah. to the point it doesn't linger too long right yeah i liked the line um i always hide behind the smoke because like everybody that like you know everybody that like smokes every day does stuff like that it's like deep down they know like man i don't want to be doing this every single day yeah and it's like i'm bringing up the mushrooms again but what's funny is right i kept thinking like and this exact thought popped into my head i thought man what's up with all this smoke in my life you know what i mean it's like i wake up i reach for some smoke you know what i mean come home same thing and it's like yeah. lately i've been trying to change that and that line really stuck out to me because of that yeah um this is not how it ends Sick of existing, but too afraid to die. I hope I'll be a better man when the years has passed. I'm a shell of my former self, struggling to cope. I'm like paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. With the hand I've been dealt, I have to leave the past behind. I'll ascend from the lowest I've ever been. This is not how it ends. Yeah. So is this like a like a hopeful song? Yeah, it's it's like it's just a song about like, just yeah, like just not wanting to be not wanting to be in that like mental rut anymore like even if it's hard it's like i i refuse to to just let this shit consume me like i'm going to try to be a better person because that's all you really can do yeah so it's like very hopeful and it kind of segues really nicely into the next ep where it's like it's less about like depression and existential dread and more of just um being somewhat hopeful and like a new outlook on life right yeah yeah um we're gonna talk about care and the lost demo oh damn Ooh. i didn't think anybody listened to that <laughs> yeah didn't, some, didn't, didn't like a uh, booker or like a producer like reach out to us or something like a promoter reach out to us because they listened to care and lost that or... was for vice city yeah yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah that yeah. split with pronouns we did um but yeah that there's two tracks i I don't even remember when I dropped those. I, I just threw them on Bandcamp because they were like... February of 2021. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so for Care, a theater production. My life is a tragedy. No happy ending and nothing but agony. I like that That's you hard. Said a yeah, I like that he said a theater production because I can say from experience, like when you have a lot of shitty life situations, sometimes you just feel like, man, this is out of a fucking movie yeah. or something. There's yep. no way I'm going through all this bullshit at once. Yeah. And it's also like I made a note of like people people like say that they have comfort shows. Mm -hmm. And like for me, I really like shows like Shameless. I like shows like Shameless The Wire. Yeah. And like it took me a while, I guess, to realize. But one of the reasons I like those shows so much is that they show the dysfunction in life. You know, I grew up like not terrible, you know, I'm not not I had it much better than a lot of other people. But like there was dysfunction in my family. And it's uh -huh. like whenever I see the same dysfunction on TV, it's like I can relate to it. So it's like comforting for me. So just kind of talk about like, I guess, like I said, shitty life situations seeming straight out of a fucking movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Man, I, I like I don't that that one's like hard because I. 
I think that those lyrics were like a really old set. They, I think that song was a B-side from the album that I just didn't put on the album. Okay. Uh, but uh, it was just another thing where like, it was the whole like, like just wave of depression where I was like, dude, so much shit's happening and I just like don't know how to cope with it. And like, it's just super overwhelming. Yeah. And it, it feels like, yeah, it feels like fucking theater production, man. It's mm-hmm. like, is this really happening? Like what this, like you, the shit feels like it's made up, but yeah, no doubt. And oh. then um, lost, lost once again, just existing, barely breathing, lost in the end, suffocating, lacking meaning, a skin-covered skeleton, just a framework of bones, aimlessly wandering for eternity. Why do I feel so damn alone? I like that you uh, mentioned like just a framework of bones because one of the deep rest lyrics that I talked about was them talking about like just feeling like a sack of meat yeah you know feeling like nothing not even human right yeah it's it's super easy to feel like that because like when you're going through all this shit and you feel super isolated it's like oh what's the point i'm like without this brain i'm just literally just like a yeah sack of meat like just yeah but yeah those two songs were definitely about like just isolation and just feeling like alone and everything um but uh, you can edit this out. <laughs> I'm keeping that in. I um, this is Austin Wolf's ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> the mic is clipping so bad. Oh my god. It'll be perfect. Yeah. I need to, need to build a bathroom down here. <laughs> we have like the plumbing in the walls already. Oh, we just shit. have to like get it done just do it yeah yeah but there's so much shit back there we gotta get rid of because there's like a desk along that wall that Mm -hmm. would totally have to go but yeah it would make it a lot easier for guests right yeah that's that's a whole like (laughs) that's a whole commitment man like just buckling down and doing that yeah honestly i would consider it but i'd have to be like if i fucking buy this bathroom that's my rent (laughs) fucking the foreseeable future right yeah it's not cheap yeah, we'll wait till he gets back. Um, to be honest, your pantry door looks exactly like the basement door, so I accidentally opened that by mistake. <laughs> that's funny, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's not the stairs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Please keep that in. I think that's funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, I will. I will. I'll keep most of it in, honestly. Oh, yeah. Even my ASMR bit? Oh, definitely. The ASMR oh, did, I, did I miss some ASMR? Yeah, you, miss, you miss some ASMR. <laughs> Welcome to Harbor Discussions Platform. <laughs> Um, now we're going to get into the Full Bring EP. Yes, sir. Konzo. Uh, the lyrics, I will carry the weight of all the mistakes I've made. I noticed that was also like the first post on Instagram. Oh, yeah. So I picked those because clearly if you reference them in a post, they must have meant something. Yeah. That that line is uh, just about like taking accountability, like being able to admit when you fucked up. Because mm-hmm. like you, you can't. The first step to becoming a better person and to learning from your mistakes is admitting them. Because if yeah. you can't admit them, if you can't admit that you were wrong in any scenario, then you're never going to develop mentally from it. So. Absolutely. But, yeah. Yeah, that's important, man. And that's like a big, that's like the main mentality of most of the people I've been listening to lately. It's like, you need to take accountability for yeah. your own life and stop blaming other people for the shit that you're doing yeah, to yourself. that doesn't help anyone if you're just blaming other people. It actually it's like, makes nah. it worse. Exactly, yeah, yeah. you yeah. be pushing away all the people that actually want to help you and shit. Right. Dude. Yeah. Um, and then similarly with, uh, is it Bankai? Bankai. Bankai. I, that whole EP, I was, uh, <laughs> I didn't think I would get a live band, so I was just like, I, I, when I wrote the record, I was, uh, I was watching Bleach at the time all the way through, and okay. I was like, you know what? They were like, all five songs were demo uh, like the demo names were like bleach related, but I just ended up like keeping them that way. I got so. you. I like when there's like song titles like yeah. that, man. Fuck an easy sounding song oh, yeah. title. Like like Veil of Maya with Matriarch, and it's just all of his fucking wife. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, laughs> female anime protagonist. <laughs> oh my god. I think this. I think it's funnier when you like instead of just like oh being his favorite like female anime protagonist it's more just with his waifus you describe yeah. it as that <laughs> dude that's what's funny right uh, at my work i work with like so my dad's a forklift driver at the mm. same place so what he does is he he puts pallets together of boxes of books yeah. and he'll bring them to people like me to like put away we'll cut open the box put the books as either 
in racks, like the full box and the racks, or sometimes we take them out individually. I see so many anime books, man, and it's like some of the covers and shit. There's yeah. some weird shit yeah. out there, but oh, no yeah. judgment at all, man, because yeah. that's a fucking huge industry, man. Yeah. Caleb is also forklift certified. Bedroom Floor is a forklift certified band, and don't you fucking forget it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking right. In this household, we appreciate forklift certified yes, people. Yes, sir. That's like a whole meme on its own that I've seen on like TikToks <laughs> yeah. and stuff, man. It's really it's funny. It's amazing. <laughs> It's so fucking funny. It's like your bitch didn't know I was four cliffs early. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. So yeah, with that song, um, it was similar. You had a post on Instagram, Red String of Fate, I hope it's not too late. Yeah, that uh that line that whole song is uh I wrote it about my uh my current girlfriend, Jill. Shout uh, out. Shout out yeah. Jill. Yeah, uh, we we <laughs> ended up like uh we have been like talking on and off for a year, which I'll, I'll explain more about that off camera. But mm -hmm. uh, I essentially wrote that song uh, after like ca like getting feelings for them, but it was a situation where I couldn't pursue it or anything. And right. so I wrote that song kind of, it's like a sad love song where it's just like, I love this person, but like, I, I can't do anything about it now. But like the whole red string of fate thing is like, you know, I feel like, people's fates are just intertwined mm -hmm. naturally yeah. and like it, it like you'll go through like crazy ups and downs in your life but there there will be some things that are just meant to like remain and like that will come back eventually and like it's funny because when i wrote that song i didn't expect to end up dating her one day but like here we are i uh, i remember i walked up to jill after one of the shows and i was just like thank you for being you and making this man such a simp to write like one of the best songs <laughs> i've ever heard <laughs> yeah no that that is for sure the the most simp song i had but, <laughs> but, but it's a good simp it's song. funny because i wrote it like as if like and nothing was ever going to come of it and it's like just funny how life works out man. oh absolutely like, some shit like i wrote that song like you manifested it yeah no literally <laughs> like like saying like saying that like red string of fate will like maybe bring us back together one day. I wrote that thinking like, there's no fucking way that's going to happen. And then it, it just did. And it's like, yeah, okay. Words have serious power, man. Yeah. It's literally like, a similar I'm all about story. manifesting, bro. Yeah. If you want something, you got to like, you got to will it into lately, existence. Especially lately, me too. Especially with this, man. Yeah. I'm like, you got to manifest because yeah. if you have it in the back of your head, like, oh, this is just going to be something I do for fun after work. It's like, then that's what the fuck it's going to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But if you got it in the back of your head, like, nah, this is the thing that's going to get me out of that fucking job. Yeah. Yeah. and you keep sticking to it, then you will. Yeah. It's, it's the mentality about... thing, bro. Facts. It's all about mentality. Facts, it really facts, is. Facts. And it's like people that like walk around feeling like shit all the time, a lot of that is their mentality. Like yeah. The way you feel physically actually has a lot to do with how you do mentally. That's mm -hmm. why placebo medicines are a yeah. thing because it's like it's all in your head. It changes your yeah. brain. Yeah, yeah. like you got you to gotta, like, want to get better and stuff too. Like if you're just walking around sulking all the time. Like obviously some people can't help that yeah. like depending on the, the severity of their like We've all been illness, in that situation but, before. Yeah, but it's just one of those things where when it gets to a certain point you got to like want to get better or else you're never going to change that's like the main vocal point of people with addiction which is like part of the like dysfunction in my family mm -hmm. and that's a big thing man if you have somebody that's like heavy on alcohol heavy on serious drugs like nothing you say is gonna make them stop you no. might make them feel bad you might make them like want to stop temporarily but until that person really wants to change and this isn't any aspect not just yeah. like addiction Unless they deep down want to change, they're not going to. No, yeah. No matter humans what humans are you creatures say. of habit. Like yeah. they're, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna budge mentally. And if, we like if they recognize to. habit too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Soul Society. I gotta say, these were some of the most fire fucking lyrics. Oh hell yeah! The clock will society. falter for no one, elapsing on its own steady accord. Shape the timeline you want. Timelines continue to contort. You're in control of who you choose to become. Days wasted are something you can't afford. That's called motherfucking bonds, man. <laughs> <laughs> nothing about that. You know nothing Dude. about that. Oh my That's god. That's just right on par with the with the manifesting and really yeah. believing like you're in control of who you choose to become. I, ha I had to add that button just for that <laughs> shit, dude. dude. Oh yeah. my god. You gotta, you gotta take your life and you gotta grab it by the nuts, bro. You gotta <laughs> fucking... Yeah. Gotta squeeze. Yeah. Dude, squeeze. like... Yeah, because, like... Dude, time doesn't <laughs> stop for anyone. Time is cruel. You always will wish you had more of it. Mm. And you gotta take the time that you have and you gotta... 
be productive with it if you want to ever like achieve what you want. Like, Don't let life squeeze your nuts. Squeeze, <laughs> squeeze life nuts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, yeah. we were just talking about this last night. Yeah. <laughs> what about squeezing nuts? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, just don't get us started on docking. Oh god. <laughs> I remember that from GTA 5, yo. That's like what that action is called. The fucking, like, that mission where you gotta, like, kill the life invader, dude. Like, all the yeah. people in the crowd are like, dock, 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 dock. <laughs> like, up there doing this shit, yo. That's that fucking fun. Liter- literally us on our tour with elsewhere. Yeah. We saw, like, one sign that said, like, like no docking or something, and then we just <laughs> would not shut the fuck up about it for yeah. that's fucking funny we still dude. haven't shut the fuck up about yeah, it yeah it's it's stuck with us I, I like that pretty much every single like either run of shows every month we just have a new inside joke yeah. it's just funny yeah man oh, that's yeah. important man yeah. that's important to have we, inside we gotta play, jokes we gotta play Soul Society sometime we do yeah. we've never played that song before yeah you know, speaking um, of like inside jokes you mentioned um the bedroom floor curse Oh, oh yes. God, so 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 um for those listening right now, it's raining right now. Yeah. It's it's raining all <laughs> fucking day. So the curse. How do I fucking start Dude, this? We every every time we are like scheduled to play a show or we have an event or something, the the weather is just always fucking awful or something at the venue just goes like horribly wrong. Like this was mostly in J- July and yeah. like all, beginning I, I of August. I feel August. like we're past it. I feel we like are. we're past it. But we uh we played uh we got invited to play Roach Fest in Southern Maryland. Uh Roachzilla is the band that puts that together. Shout out them. But uh we we pulled up to the venue. It was already stressful because like uh we were four piecing it because Caleb couldn't make it, so uh and Logan was gonna just barely make it. Um, and I, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to play guitar for this show, which I don't normally do. Uh, and the weather was like kind of getting really bad a- as it approached our set. It was like an all day fest thing. And right when our time slot came up, this like insane storm was just coming right over the VFW. Yeah. And I remember like before, like when you were talking about just like something in the set, thunder would rumble. Yeah. Every time I mentioned something about like, Oh, I hope we play the set. There'd be like a thunder rumble. Oh and I'm like, God. Oh, yeah, you, but, wouldn't even, you wouldn't even say that. You would just mention like something in the set list, like moving a song or like, yeah. um, like what you wanted to do in a specific song. And then thunder would rumble. Yeah. And we, uh, so, so it starts like pouring and our time slot comes up and like, it's there. The, the day's packed with bands. So they're like, all right, like we got to, get you guys set up we set up and the storm gets so bad our our gear like they had like two tents set up on the right. stage but they didn't cover the middle mm. yeah so our gear was getting like fucking soaked oh, and God. we were about to like we sound checked and everything and we were about to ring out and start the set and dude like the biggest strike of lightning i've ever seen oh, hits like 10 feet away from the tent and Ooh. like like lauren's like hairs like went up oh, and like God, damn. like something blew and like we just immediately all ran off the stage and like took our gear off and stuff we didn't get the fucking play we drove like two and a half hours for oh us, so. that sucks yeah. yeah logan made there just in time got his stuff just yeah. on stage i was already sketched out by that because like that little uh, like you said that little gap in the tent that was just there yeah. letting all the rain it was just pouring all over my hi hats, yeah. all my symbols. I'm just like, oh, yeah. So we took all our nasty. shit off, and and they kept the show going. Like the thunderstorm went away, but it was still pouring, and there were like cables and puddles and shit. Oh, and they man. still wanted to keep playing, and we're like, we're we're good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, we uh pick your yeah. battles. Yeah, like I said, and I like wow. we just we have terrible luck with that. Like we played at uh, Fort Armistead in Pasadena one time. Like the first time we played there, it was just like downpour they weren't prepared and like it was just so muddy our gear got like caked in mud it was just it's it was shit a, like that it was yeah. a fun show and thank god we did get to play because everybody loved it there. that would have made it worse if we didn't get to play yeah. Yeah. yeah but we did get very caked in mud yeah. um there was another uh, no it was a practice we all uh, like you and lauren were skateboarding and um it just started like downpouring like right before we were about yeah. to practice so you guys were just like hey austin can we come over yeah some higher power is trying to fuck with us oh yeah <laughs> and then um the college park show where we did that dual bedroom floor and citric one we were loading in all the gear they couldn't let us in because the person because tripping corpse shout out tripping corpse this is not their fault um the person their contact didn't unlock the doors uh, in time so we had to delay it by a little yeah. bit and it was raining then too and we thought that the show was gonna get like canceled or something it was just like dude every time like we had this string of shows where we're like fuck yeah. us i guess oh, so, like yeah. this is bad but i i think 
I think we're good. I yeah. think I think we're all right. Yeah, no. Now, um, when but... he pulled up, man, I was like, oh, of course, it's got to be shitty today. And he's like, that's the bedroom floor curse. Make yeah. sure you ask about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, uh, yeah. I think how it started was so basically, Lauren and I, we were driving back from a Citra gig from Baltimore. We were driving back on 140. It was 11 p.m. We were tired. We were talking about something else entirely. I forget what we were talking about and i love telling this part but um we were just driving down 140 we were in the middle of talking and we saw this old woman in a nightgown just like almost like spaced out staring at the sky just like walking down 140 past us and we were just like what the fuck was that and it's probably her fault. We, that's what I, no, that's what I was. That's what I was saying. We think that she, for some fucking reason, she was a witch and hexed We've us. We've been hexed, yeah. Yeah, like that's, dr- like that's drag me like, fuck. like 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 a drag me to hell. Have you guys seen that movie? I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh Ooh. my god, that was that was. F- How often does that image pop into your head of that lady? <laughs> Very often. <laughs> Very that often. sounds fucking creepy yeah. as fuck be, yeah, she I'd was in a nightgown out. she was like just walking down all spaced out we thought that she was holding something in her hand like a uh. teddy bear or something it might have been a water bottle but it looked like a fucking teddy bear yeah i would have just been like no 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 no, no, no. 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 bust a fat u-turn yeah. in the middle of the highway no no, no no that's the thing like the direction we were going was our home oh, we God, were driving yeah. back home so we couldn't turn around Dude. she was just walking the opposite direction that's wild bro all right, last song on the Full Bring EP that we're going to talk about is Hollow, and I chose to pick out the lyrics Manipulator, Undeserving of Sympathy, Instigator, When Will You Learn You Won't Get the Attention You Seek. Bars. I actually don't know what this song is about. I had, like, a good idea um, from all the other songs, but I don't think you've ever told me, like, what this song specifically um, is about. This one, there, I, uh, a few years ago, I just, like, again, not going to name drop anyone, but I just, like... Some people in my in my circle, I learned over the years just to be like huge manipulators, just like emotionally abusive. And I know like, that. Mm-hmm. And like it's just one of those things where it's like, like that 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 song just just shows my disdain for people like that, just because like I don't fuck with that man. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I feel that man. I had like my elementary school friend. I realized like he started stealing from me and shit like that. And Jesus. I was just like it's fucked up, man. Yeah, well, like it was like. <sighs> It was a weird thing. He was the kind of person, like, he would steal your shit and then help you look for it. Oh, you know? that's the worst, man. Yeah, and that, that's the thing, like, like that song is uh, more about, like, it's the whole, like, traitor vibe just because, like... It, 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 yeah, yeah, like, it, like you, you are friends with these people and then you see this whole other light of them or you mm-hmm. learn about this other side of them and it feels like they're just, like betraying your friendship. Yeah, it's just, sometimes like, what it the takes, fuck, like, man? years to see that shit, Absolutely. Man. yeah. I definitely relate to that heavy because, like, just so many situations, so many recent situations where I've just realized you can't really trust that many people nowadays. You can't, man. Like, even if you think you can, people will put on all sorts of facades just to look good in front of people. And it's like you don't really know them unless you, like, know them hyper personally. And like you said, that takes, like, years sometimes to figure that out. Exactly. And it's just like, like... It, going back to like being a people pleaser i always thought that i got to be friends with everybody then i then it like it only recently like a f- like a few months ago took me like this long to realize not everybody's gonna want to be your friend that's okay but yeah. a lot of them are just gonna fucking use you and that's yeah. not okay yeah they will use you to get what they want and then just throw you away when it's when it's convenient for them and fucking narcissists man Narcissist. yeah. <laughs> it's just like and then they'll try to put it all on you once they realize that um, you realize the bullshit that they're on. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like mind boggling yeah. how these people find ways to flip it. And it's like, it literally makes you go like, uh, uh, yeah, duh, yeah, you have well. to like, if, as long as you have the awareness to and the confidence in yourself to be like, no, I know that you're fucking you're acting up right now. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. exactly. Because it's really easy to let them manipulate. That's why they're manipulators, because yeah. they're used to people just, like, doing what they say and, like, just, like, like, thinking more towards their agenda and stuff. And it's just, like, it, yeah, it, it's hard, man. It's but, hard to weed that shit out, but, like... But karma, as they always say, is a cruel mistress. And, like, a lot of the times, like, 
the people that we uh, the people that we're referring to they're getting their comeuppance oh yeah they're absolutely getting their comeuppance karma is worse than anything you could do man it's because it's so just, satisfying it's because yeah. it's just like if you're a manipulator for so long you're gonna have no friends yeah you're gonna have no fucking you're friends. gonna run out of people to manipulate bro. exactly <laughs> i don't yeah. understand it just that just be a good person it's like if you don't want to hang out with someone if you don't want to fuck with them don't fuck with them then. yeah yeah it's yeah. that simple you're really gonna run is. out of friends, period, if people realize that you just use others for your own gain. Yeah, no doubt. And then uh, we're gonna talk about Vice City, which was part of the uh, Pronoun Split album. Mm -hmm. um, when left to my devices, I'm a slave to my vices. Um, I just have like a question of like, what are some of the vices you say you've struggled with? Shout uh, out so, pronouns, first of all. Yeah, pronouns are sick. Shout Order. out Chris. Chris, you gotta play Destiny with me, bro. Because, <laughs> these, because these motherfuckers in my band won't do it. I can't do it, bro. You can't do it. I, I did my time with you that game. You can't relapse. But, uh, yeah, so so that's another... that. Um, that is another Steven song that he wrote the lyrics for. He actually wrote guitar on that song, too. Uh, I did, like, the rhythm, and he did, like, lead on that. But, uh, yeah, those lyrics are super dope. Um, like, I, I, knowing Steven personally, like, we went through similar, like, similar things, just, like, depressive episodes and all that. And, like, just, like, there are so many vices that anyone can encounter and like that's up to anyone's interpretation like for some people it might be like like drug abuse like yeah. other people it just might be like mental health and stuff but um the whole like uh like the vices thing is just like it's again just like escapism to yeah. to, to maybe stop feeling shitty about the things you, you feel and shitty that's about, all but... temporary exactly it, it's it's a temporary solution and like you gotta if you want to actually get better you gotta like learn to be above it and to not just like fall back on those those devices to to make you like forget about it for a while because that just furthers the problem it just pushes it back a little bit and then it comes back up again it's a right. vicious cycle it's like it's like a rubber band it's like a rubber band like the far the farther back you stretch it more the tension. more the more it's yeah. gonna fucking hurt when it slams yep. back into you oh yeah yep all right now we're gonna talk about you guys did live session recordings that released directly to vinyl at least of all studios in brooklyn yeah. Um, so do you guys collect any vinyls at all? I do. I uh, do. I used to actually. I don't really anymore because it's a money pit. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, but yeah, that that experience was super cool. Like I got I, I got like a big ass crate of records and stuff. And nice. We did like a we did a bunch uh like for the pre orders and stuff. But then we got more made just for like resale. So nice. that one was but, really cool. Um. Oh, that was an experience getting there and coming back. <laughs> yeah, just try, we uh we weren't able to like book a show around it, but we just we just pulled up to Brooklyn, did the session, and came in, back. In my dad's Chevy Silverado. Yeah. The transmission died on the way back. Yeah. Almost. Oh, we God. we had to pull over. We almost didn't make it back, but thankfully it yeah. like there, there's a picture on my Instagram of like Logan and Caleb like hunched over it. Yeah, just like <laughs> looking at it. Thank God Caleb's a car guy because I don't know shit about cars, bro. Yeah, well, the I'm thing is, he didn't even, he didn't even know. He just like assumed that since there was nothing wrong with like, like the visuals, like yeah. anything visually, yeah. it must have been the transmission. But yeah, Silverado's dead. It's completely <laughs> gone now. My, my dad just got a new truck because oh. <laughs> he had to just get rid of it. Damn, but um, never forget. Oh, absolutely. But that was a really fun experience i didn't expect it to go that well i thought we were gonna get conned i thought we were gonna get scammed i thought it wasn't gonna I, be real I, you know i uh i didn't think that like it's easy to think that like when when someone states away reaches out to you and it's like hey come do this yeah. session it's like you you really like don't know what to expect you don't believe but, it until it happens yeah. but dude they like they handled it so professionally and like the, the equipment they have is insane dude it's like from like the like the 50s or something Damn. and like it's like it's this big rig that just takes like the recording and just puts it right on the vinyl, and it's like, yeah. it's so that that room, that little tiny room alone is probably like yeah. worth more money than I'll ever see in my oh, life. Yeah, but no doubt. We, Especially now that it's like kind of older equipment, yeah. and it's like you can't probably get the parts. Exactly. And it's really rare. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. That's what's up. It's really cool, and also like, but uh, but yeah, like a few friends of mine, like after we got it and after we posted like the merch drop. Um, with like the new shirts and the least of all resales, a few of my friends just like sent that to me and then like DM'd me saying, I'm gonna be honest, I thought least of all wasn't real. I thought it was I thought it was like a yeah. money laundering scheme. Yeah, I thought you guys got They hit up they've hit up like a few bands that we're tight with like around here and like it's weird because they're based out of Brooklyn. Right. And I'm sure they have different people hitting up different like 
areas but it's just weird that like a place so far away was like reaching out to like just dmv bands and right. it's like yeah. it's like that's kind of weird but it's cool when yeah like now that we actually know it's a real thing i think it's really fucking yeah. cool i honestly never had any doubt just the way just uh talking to their rep through email they were just super professional yeah. like you, you can kind of tell like in an email like if if it's something that is going to be like more it's like the whole like like holding yourself to a professional standard yeah. thing. If they're talking to you professionally, obviously they can scam you. But like, it, mm -hmm. I didn't get that vibe oh, yeah. from them. Honestly. It's like I said earlier, man. It's all about how you carry yourself. Yeah. And uh, with the Trey Cheney interview I just did, I had to book that. I had to email his management, and I had to sound professional. Yeah. And it's like, I I really I really didn't think it was a scam, but it was like you know when you pay to get somebody on, and it's like until it happens, you're like God, I hope this goes through. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So I know what you guys feel with that. Yeah, the only doubt I had there was when we got to the actual place. We didn't see any signs for anything. I thought we were entering like some sort of fucking. Oh uh, no, it's we that's some city shit, bro. It's just buildings, man. They're right. not labeled or anything. You just gotta... Like we just got we just got to this industrial part of Brooklyn, just a bunch of fucking. It was like in an alleyway. Yeah, just a bunch of country kids just in like this industrial alley part of Brooklyn with no signs as to where we were. There was like a Polish like textiles or like yeah, furniture was, factory right next. It was next. in a weird pocket of Brooklyn. Got some dude but... holding a sign that says <laughs> least involved. Yeah. Oh yeah, I thought we were I thought we were going to get fucking kidnapped by the mafia or some <laughs> shit. I genuinely thought we were about to walk into some illegal like drug operation. Yeah, right? It was going to be funny as hell <laughs> most studios are like that like in the cities and stuff like it's just like some building that's not labeled or anything and you walk through you have to walk through like hallways of, of like other buildings and stuff and then there's just like a door that takes you to like the specific like yeah. space that is for that but, but but then once you get to that specific space it's almost like it's a complete different world oh, yeah, it's, it's almost dope. like you're walking through a portal into a whole different yeah. side of the world yeah because yeah. it's just how stark of a contrast it is i gotcha all right, now we're going to get into some uh, some of the bedroom floor shows that I thought were pretty notable. Um, like I said, we talked about the Garrett Fest in Silver Spring. It was recorded and released on YouTube. Special thanks to East Coast Entropy for filming the set. That's, yes. his, that's his Instagram if anybody yep. wants to go check him out. So just talk about that. that um, first off, East Coast Entropy. That's my buddy uh, Lucas from um, working at the Fillmore. Um, he is king like i love that man to death he is just so funny always a pleasure to work with that and footage he got was cool too. oh yeah that it's like a, really cool. like a his camcorder yeah it's like a night night yeah. footage that yeah i like really it yeah. that show is crazy too because like a lot of a lot of these shows we play we we really don't have any expectations going into it and and that was a show that like we we knew gradual slip like really well and we're like okay cool that's at least like a band we know right. uh so we can be tight with but when we got there like the turnout was like insane like that like silver spring area has like that scene is like super supportive and oh, yeah. like they were it, moshing to all of our songs dude, and yeah yeah like it was cool because like the the crowd's energy never died and it was like it was this like big ass like uh it was at a park inside of a, uh, a building it was like pretty open just like literally just like a, a rectangular building huge space and it was like decently packed in there and like there was a, there was a lot of heads in there and they were all like mosh and they all like vibed with the energy and stuff mm -hmm. super fun show i like, think they were just really excited to see a new band yeah that's true because like we we've, we've technically better floor has been a band since 2017 but like we're like with this new lineup we're kind of coming in as like a new band because right. no one really like knows about us until yeah. until now but yeah we're still warming up there's still a lot of people that either don't really know us or don't really fuck yeah. with us that much that's the thing we're, we're paving our way out here man. yeah just Hell yeah playing wherever and whenever yeah. we can and but like, yeah when... sh shout out to lucas for getting that footage yeah. because it was fucking cool he fi he films like car meets and shit hmm. oh nice so that's why the camera work is kind of similar to a lot of those like car meet places because he he goes to a lot of car meets in uh, the DMV, D.C. area, and he mm -hmm. films it. There's a lot of cool photos and stuff like that that gets taken at uh, car meets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, st I still think, like, that one collage of photos from Garrett Fest um, that that one old man took, I think, was probably some of the best photos we've ever gotten yeah. done. I forget his I forget his at, but uh, it's, he... It's like the one, the one with Lauren on the uh, Lauren on the mic and you uh, climbing on oh, the Oh, yeah, amp. I was on her base. <laughs> and then the, base the close up of Logan when he's do, uh, yeah. doing the tappy parts on his guitar. I think that's just so Dude, fucking cool. I love gig pics, man. Especially <laughs> when like you get good photographers out there, they just make they just make you look so cool. Like it, oh, it's so dope. Absolutely, that was like our 
third show with that lineup I think too. So, yeah. Yeah. And what's funny about that footage, right? Um, it's like you said, you played in like kind of like pop punkish bands beforehand, and that's kind of what I knew you for. And then when I was like, all right, let me, I'm gonna check out uh, Austin's band, and I was like looking up on YouTube, and I and I started playing that, and I was like, oh, this is different. Yeah. This is different <laughs> yeah. than what he was in before. Yeah. I I never started out <laughs> with hardcore so basically like one of the main reasons i got back into music was because i was listening to a lot of progressive rock progressive metal like dream theater shout out dream theater Hell best yeah. band of all time and nobody can argue with me otherwise fuck you <laughs> but um yeah so i just got into like that was my exposure getting back into heavy bands my music taste since i was only just then getting back into music was very very like not so diverse but then once I started like jamming with Caleb and Lauren and then eventually uh, Jesse and like so many other musicians in the area, um, my music taste broadened and I was starting to get more into metalcore and more into hardcore, more into like he uh, like really intense punk music. Right. So, uh, so it was like I only started like as a pop punk drummer because it was just out of necessity, really. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, recently, you guys were on a tour with Mind Goblin. Mind yes. Goblin, these nuts. Yes, yes, sir. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the legend of Gargalon. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love those cats. Yeah, they're, I, they're so good. I so swear good. to God, they're all so great. Brody's a great songwriter, great guitarist. Um, Mitch, great drummer, really cool. Leela, absolutely amazing amazing I love vocals. vocalist oh my god they sound like they sound like if uh if oathbreaker was more hardcore yeah which is like super dope oh yeah Le uh, liam great bassist great stage presence just great tone overall too uh, he's also in um moonflower if yeah. you know who New moonflower is I john heard of him yeah but yeah like leela's vocals it's like their vocals are just like you can feel the agony yeah. in yeah. that we, with just how they scream and how they just are just so intense yeah we we might get her on a knife spitter song loki <sighs> loki 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 <laughs> yeah but like loki, dude loki. yeah they're they're so tight like they're a band that i could watch them play every day of my life and be like so stoked about it like uh, yeah. They're oh, yeah super tight i got two shows from the recent tour so the garage in westminster now Kind of going back to like the birdies show it's like we haven't really had shows like this for a yeah. while in westminster so like what does it feel like to have a local spot again it was convenient yeah, yeah it's convenient because we don't have to drive like multiple hours not that we ever mind like we'll do it but like it's nice that like we're basically playing a show like in our backyard you know oh, yeah. yeah and it's like yeah like all uh, like we didn't have to worry about like who would be like designated driver so we were all just kind of like just getting drunk and just like that's the thing i noticed dude i pulled up i was like damn it's like a block party everybody's yeah. got modelos yeah. yeah oh my god <laughs> dude after one of the after um the second fort armistead show um remember when like this uh, the drummer or the like the singer of muerte just like handed me a modelo after our set oh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't see that that's funny yeah. shit. Oh, oh no it was after when i played with brain drain shout out oh okay. shout out fog yeah. man but um, he just handed me a Modelo. I was like, great job, bro. I was just like, thanks. This shit, this tastes like shit, but I'll drink it anyway out of respect. Thank you, Wade Day. Activate your inner fool. Yeah. Um, and then I also have a... It was Luigi's Mansion in Philly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so talk about that, because then, like, how it compares to other house shows that you've been so, a part of. So... House shows are always interesting because it could either go really well and be really organized, or it can be just a total clusterfuck. Luigi's Mansion, that show went so well. Like, obviously, like, it's been a, an established venue for a while, and, like, they know what they're doing, but, like... That's because the Philly scene, in general, has been very well established. Yeah. We want to try to get into the Philly scene more, at least I want to try to, because there's just so much music there, there's so many connections Absolutely. there. But it is hard. Yeah. They are picky. Yeah. But for good reason, really. Right. But, yeah, Luigi's was really cool. Like, it, when you go down in that basement, it... They, uh... It, it's just, like, a... Was it a finished basement? No, it was like okay. a, it was like an unfinished yeah. basement. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like you know, <laughs> typical basement show vibes. But uh, they have this like Luigi banner in the back, and uh, behind that banner is this little like 
small like alcove room where they put like all the gear and stuff and that when i went in there i was like oh i see why they call it luigi's mansion yeah. now this feels like i'm in a crypt right now <laughs> yeah but that that venue was super cool the people who run it are, are super nice and yeah. super supportive literally the day before or the tour danny and i we just went to um round one in towson the mm-hmm. bowling alley and arcade and there was a luigi's a Luigi's Mansion game, and so I got a picture of them looking at it with like the pog face, like oh, Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> Holy shit! Nice. All right, I have the Hill Street Skate Park show, and uh, the post mentioned something called the Trevor Project. What what is that? So the Trevor Project is a nonprofit charity organization for um, LGBT youth. Um, who suffer from depression and mental illness. It's basically like the LGBTQ plus community's own um, suicide prevention uh, um, hotline, dedicated suicide prevention hotline, which is very important in a scene like this. Um, We've unfortunately lost some people due to depression, suicide, mental illness, and it's really hard on everybody. Just recently, um, there was a memorial show for um, Phoenix at a Phoenix Stone, um, rest in peace, the singer and songwriter of Stone Cold Chakra. Really great band. If you haven't listened to them, you should check them out. But yes, Phoenix, uh, Phoenix unfortunately passed away. And the memorial show there was just so nice because it was just a whole bunch of people from... Ho- so many different parts of the scene coming together to just like be in memory of Phoenix. Um, do you remember Max from Without an Accent? Um, Without an Accent. Without the accent. Without yeah. the accent yeah. from the Six Eleven show. Yeah. yeah, they were there. Oh, and shit, I, that's and, cool. Yeah, and I didn't even realize it. Like, like I talked to them and they were just like, hey, "I'm gonna be honest. I don't know how it didn't even cross my mind that you would have known who uh, who." Um, Phoenix was, and it's just like a lot of people knew her, a lot of people loved her, and it's just, it's re- it's really hard losing someone as as sweet, as kind, and as influential as they are. Because the they're scene. always the least deserving of that kind of thing. To happen to them. I was just gonna say, man, it sucks because like it's like what I was saying earlier about like an all positive God and all these bad things happening, and it's like it always tends to happen to the best people yeah. too. It's so unfortunate. Yeah. Um, so you guys mentioned Fort Armistead. Now I was researching constituents who yeah. trying to get them on at some point. Hell yeah. Um, and when I saw this place, I was like, Ooh, I gotta come here at this, at some <laughs> yeah, point. It's I a love, cool I, spot. Yeah. yeah, I love how like dingy it is. Yeah. I, I like these kind of spots, you know, cause like it, it's just, it's a vibe. Right. Yeah. So I'm curious, right? Yeah. Like how hard is it to get to like where the actual bands play? So, so, uh, uh, the, the fort itself is like. In, in a park in Baltimore. Um, but you, you like drive down this like really long road off the highway and uh, uh, it's not actually that difficult to get to the actual spot. It's like, there's like a, a road you park on and then there's like a path like right off the road that you walk down like just like a little ways and it's just like right there. I got it's you. just like a, yeah, the spot specifically, it's just like a, like a it has like an overhang and like oh, yeah. just like a, a roofed area where yeah. that's where they like have all the bands playing yeah. stuff but I, honestly even though we didn't have the best experience on the first show when it comes to like our gear being caked in mud after the second show i would be down to play there again yeah the second sh- the second show was good we uh it, it went a lot better like it, it rained a little bit but it wasn't like they were way more prepared for it and it wasn't like a mess or anything yeah. but I, i've heard some sketchy stuff about that place just in terms of like sketchy shit happening which yeah it, it's 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 in a really like remote spot right like, so naturally like i feel like a lot of sketchy shit would be bound to go yeah, down there and out. there's no supervision or anything there's no it's just like i will say they have been getting better about it i have that's heard good. that they're starting to crack down on that kind of shit more so like when, when you pull up to the fort um how easy is it to like see where everything is like are you able to pull up and then automatically see where people are going or mm, uh so kind the of. first time we played there we we like didn't know where like where the fuck to go because like down at the end of the road there's this big lot but the lot isn't like really close to where the music is it's like up the road a little bit but uh but it, it it's one of those things where like it, it's 
it's not necessarily super easy to see everything because like the road itself you can only really see what's on the road you can't see like the venue from the road right. they should it's get like flood trees yeah they should get floodlights um if the fort peeps are listening to this floodlights yeah definitely and floodlights like it, it's easy for people to like venture off further into the fort past the bands and like right. for, I don't know. it's just there's a lot of i feel like that spot's really easy for people to like just do sus shit you know yeah, it's no you can there's definitely places you can go there where like no one's gonna see you but yeah, yeah. it's easy to get lost too and it's also kind of easy to yeah. get hurt but that's only um, if you venture the glory like, hole yeah <laughs> yeah that that place i'm surprised no one's gotten like seriously hurt there yet oh my God, but, like, yeah. remember when like lauren was like like i said i'm pretty small enough so remember when like lauren was daring me to just like see if i can make it through that little crevice without <laughs> touching it in the glory hole and danny was like no don't encourage him he <laughs> yeah. will do it yeah there's this like there's this hole that like leads to this like underground pathway it's really fucking weird it's but... gross and, yeah. and like right next to it it's like an arrow pointed at it and written in like chalk or spray paint glory hole, glory hole. Oh, God. <laughs> who knows what's gone down who there knows? not me i don't want to know should, uh, should we talk about the ghost kid <laughs> no. <laughs> no 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 that's another story for another day all right real quick um i just wanted you guys to talk about like some of the merch you've done because you recently just released some new merch you know where do you guys go to get your merch done and like how hard is it actually to get merch and what's the hardest part of getting so merch? i would say the hardest part about getting merch is funding the merch yeah just because like it, it's one of those things where you have to like spend money to make money <laughs> mm -hmm. uh but we uh our merch that we've done recently, uh, Logan's Logan's girlfriend Maddie does uh, some of our designs. Like she did our six feet design, and uh, the the first shirt we printed with uh, the Bankai lyrics on it, she did that design too. But uh, uh, the other, we have another design. It's like this like like tree looking thing. It's a super like warp tour looking design. We got this uh, this guy Grimcat to do it. Mm -hmm. He does like a lot of band merch and stuff. He nice. like uh, does a lot of graffiti art. Super talented artist and like really nice guy. We got to meet him. Uh, but we got them printed through ML Printing, which is they're based out of uh, Punxsutawney in PA, I think. Uh, but they have like pretty fair rates and they're like they they do it quick. They get it to you. The 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 merch came out like flawlessly. So oh, yeah. Um, it's yeah. It, it's hard because like if you go to a place like that, it's gonna it's gonna be more expensive just because like they're like an actual company doing this versus doing it DIY. But right. also the, the final product is like way better when you go through an actual company, oh, which yeah. again adds to the whole professionalism thing. Cause like you don't want your, you want your merch to be fire. You want to, you want to print merch that you would wear yourself and be proud exactly. of wearing it. Cause yeah. if you don't want to wear it, who the fuck else is going to want to wear it? That's like, true. That's, that. a, that's also the kind of principle I feel about just music in general. Like I know a lot of people are just like, are like oh i don't listen to my own music that's very pretentious or something it's just like bro if no. you don't like your music how are other yeah, you can't people expect to? other people to like, it's one yeah. thing it's like if you've worked on a certain song for like so long you've played it over and over and over again and you're just kind of sick of it that's one thing but like if like you're not satisfied with the final product it's like oh wow i can just imagine like one of my favorite artists uh playing this and just ha i'm i'm just having a great old time with it I feel like that's success. Yeah. Gotcha. This is my last note because we do have to wrap up. Uh, Jesse, you have a gaming channel, right? Is that still I something do. you do? Yeah. So Bits that's something uh, uh, with Bedroom Floor being my solo project for so long, it was kind of like, like I would man like literally everything, like every facet of it I would tackle myself, which is like, like nice sometimes, but sometimes it's just, it's exhausting. But now that like, I have a full band and, and like just a bunch of like very competent people who like really just want to contribute to this. It gives me time to like focus on other facets that I like to do, which like gaming is like, I fucking love gaming, like video games, dude. I always have. That was and my original idea for content creation, yeah, but I yeah. decided to like take it in another direction with this. I feel like everybody at some point wanted to be a gaming YouTuber. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. And uh, it's one of those things that like. Now, now that I have this free time, like I started like Twitch streaming. I've uh, I've done like a Let's Play on YouTube. Like I have a YouTube channel too. Yeah, a lot of Halo um, Infinite games. Yeah, there, yeah. So. I uh, I played that. I did a Let's Play that campaign when it came out. That was super fun. Like John super really, cool. John did really a deep dive on us, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I deep dive on my. This guess. is awesome, dude. Like this is this is like everything I'd ever want to like have for a podcast. You killed this shit. Thank dude. you, bro. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. round of applause. Dude. <laughs> Um, but that's yeah, the applause. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that was a joke. <laughs> dude, like, 
Uh, Twitch streaming is super fun just because, like, it's another networking thing. Like, you get you get your friends to hop in and, like, just, like, interact with you and stuff. And it's something cool that, like, people people may know me as a musician and see, oh, he has a Twitch channel. I'll check that out. And, like, vice versa. Like, people check out my band. Right. Um, and it, it's just one of those things that, like, you know, if, if, like, whenever I get too old to jump around and scream on a stage, I, I still have something I can, like, fall back and do that I really enjoy. So Yeah, no doubt. That's definitely, like... You know, I, I'm always going to do this, but mm. eventually I want this to take me to a position where I can do that sort of stuff yeah. as well. Right. All right. Um, we are running out of time. So quickly, if you guys just want to uh, shout out some of your upcoming shows and if when anybody can expect some new material, maybe. We are playing a show this Friday, but I don't I don't think it would be I don't think the podcast would be uploaded by then. So we still. Mention but, it yeah, we're, we're playing at the crown for Slam Dog Fest. Uh, shout out Forbidden Technique for uh giving us a spot on that uh we're playing westminster skate park on the 22nd i wish i could be there yeah. i'm gonna be in fucking like colorado <laughs> oh, and shit, shit. Oh, that's gonna be yeah, fun dude. shout um, out um pterodactyl for beef beer and beatdowns. that's gonna that's be, gonna be fun really good i'm excited one. to play some riffs and watch some wrestling and get drunk <laughs> off my ass and it's also just wear halloween costumes that's true yeah what's your halloween costume gonna be i might i might just whip out the jedi robes again bro yeah. i wanted to be like Jon snow from like game of thrones or something but i don't i don't know if i have the money to get the fuck the whole <laughs> get up right now but <laughs> I, I already finished my costume i'm going as walter white Oh, nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah I, keep, uh, keeping the bit going. The, I will say, uh, the the show I'm super stoked for, we got invited to uh, play with Promise Breaker, Sunburner, and Hangdog at JB Love Drafts uh, November 20th. That shit is going to be a banger, dude. Oh, yeah. Promise Breaker is like... Oh, I love him so much. Tyler Beam again, what, the, the man. Wasn't there another show early fe- or early November, or am I just tripping? Oh. It was like oh, November 4th or something, or am I... Am I, I forget. I'll have to look into that. Uh, but, so yeah. I have Key Brewing Company, 1029 and 1120, JB's Micropub. Yeah, I, yeah. we might not... We... What? I feel like we booked a second. Oh, we're... Uh, this isn't announced yet. Well, the, the, the tour's announced, but uh, Actor Observer is going on tour for their album release, and we're opening the Shamrock end date with, nice. uh, with Granite State. Yeah. Uh, Shout out Granite State. Yeah, Granite State, they're the boys. I fucking love Granite State. Fonzie's back. Hell yeah, dude. Fonzie's back. Fonzie's a legend, bro. Oh my god. I, I actually saw him at the film war. Oh really? Yeah. So he uh, so Fonzo, Granite State bassist, he tours around. He's like the bass tech for Doja Cat. He's getting oh, okay. a, he's getting a lo- involved with a lot of like teching stuff, making a lot of great connections. Um he showed up to um this show i worked at it was i prevails headlining tour pierce the veil nice. and fit for a king played there and i saw and when i was like loading up pierce the veil's merch um out comes fonzo walking around talking to fit for a king's basis and i'm just hey. like bro what the fuck what That's are you sick. doing here <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah i uh new music we got some we got shit cooking um we got like a whole we got like a new ep's worth of material but that's gonna be a little later we're actually doing a redux i'm not gonna say of what record but we're doing a redux uh, with the full band, it'll be the first release with like everyone doing their parts on it and stuff. Nice. So I feel like this will and will really help us out. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm excited because everything like from now on is going to be like us as a unit versus just like me recording it in my bedroom. So I'm, I'm super excited for the future. So mm-hmm. we cool. got new shit coming, big things coming soon, as they big say. Big things coming <laughs> soon. Thanks everybody well, for listening. I wish I could continue this, but I have a fucking dentist appointment. Hey. Boo! Oh. Oh. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> bullshit.